Together, they are Titans in the Mountain West. Tonight, TCU and BYU are in for Throwdown Thursday. The Horn Frogs embrace the spoilers role. Tommy Blake's return gives them a big puncher's chance. And a wicked one-two it is when doubled up with Chase Ortiz. Meanwhile, the defending champion Cougars appear title belt worthy. QB Max Hall has unveiled the talented right cross. And then there are devastating body blows from Harvey Unga. TCU BYU, a surefire knockout on Versus. We expect plenty of electricity to warm up the night in Provo as the Horn Frogs at TCU catch up with the Cougars of BYU. A taste of alphabet soup in college football on Versus. Well then, you are right on time. Along with Glenn Parker, I'm Joe Beninati. Tim Nebert piles on in just a moment. There is a bit of a chill in the air, which means it's getting late in the college football season. Glenn, TCU has to be a spoiler. How do they get it done? Hey, pure emotion. When you thought you would be the top of the Mountain West Conference and you're not, and you're playing for a bowl game, you come out with a lot of emotion and try to knock off the top guy. BYU is the top guy. They've dispatched 12 straight conference foes. Their offense is predictably powerful behind Max Hall. Well, predictable because they have a good quarterback at BYU, something they continually have. This is an offense that is easy to be good at. It's very tough to be great. Already 6-2 and two as a starter. And he has weapons of plenty, including redshirt freshman Harvey Unga, who has made his mark quickly. Well, he's strong out of the backfield. He can run people over. But if you ask him to be a receiver out of the backfield, maybe he's even better because he can separate and then run through tackles. This guy gets it done. He has a difficult assignment in front of him tonight because for years, TCU made its reputation on defense. Tonight, they should have Tommy Blake close to his old self again. Well, his old self was a guy that wrecked, wreaked, absolutely wreaked havoc on this BYU D, uh, offense. Here's a guy that's he has got that motor everybody talks about. More importantly, he's an emotional leader. This is a guy that can simply destroy an offense. On the offensive side, Andy Dalton just has to keep his composure. Just keep his composure. They'll do this. They'll roll him out. Why? That will limit the amount of reads that he has to make. That will limit his mistakes. This should be a great one. One man capable of much mayhem for BYU is Jan Dork. Ferguson. Expect to see him put a target on Aaron Brown. The flashy frog healthy again and ready to run on Versus. versus. Mountain West football on Versus is brought to you by Under Armour. The advantage is undeniable. Mountain West Conference fans can see plenty of College football pageant tree this week. All nine teams are in action. Two of them getting a head start on the gridiron this Thursday for you on Versus. It's BYU and TCU. And Tim Nevert will explain sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. BYU, they are three and two in their last five games on Thursday night. This is the only Thursday night game they've had all season long. But if you're TCU, it's not been a good thing. They're one and four in their last five Thursday night games. 0 oh and two this year. This is their third one late on Thursday night. Their second one on the road, and they've done some things to try to change their luck. They change the way they travel. They change the time they travel. They change the restaurants they eat at, the hotel they stay at. They've done a lot of things differently this trip, hoping that that will turn their luck around on Thursday. Thursday nights. And who's to say coaches are superstitious? As you look at Gary Patterson's numbers, TCU won the coin toss. They deferred. BYU here at home at Lavelle Edwards Stadium is in the blue, receiving the football. Colley from the 13. Austin Colley drives it straight ahead, gets a crack, and then gets flattened at the 35. There is a flag down. So Austin Colley gives his gang a spark right off the opening kickoff. Personal foul, face mask, kicking team number nine. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. That's the voice of the referee, Dan Romeo. 
Tough to tell from that angle, but obviously the official saw it. He was real close. We weren't. Certainly uh, looked like you got a grab on that face mask, didn't it, Joe? It sure did. Max Hall, the sophomore from Mesa, Arizona, has taken the wheel nicely this fall, reestablished some of his momentum last week. Offensive coordinator Robert and I really likes the way Max is growing up within the scheme. It's a scheme he says is so difficult to master. First and 10 from midfield for the Cougars and out of the gun. A short drop and a quick pitch and catch. The connection made there with the wideout, Matt Allen. Offensive line for BYU, these dudes are enormous. Reynolds has his hands full today. Olai is one of the best in the conference. Big time strength in Bright, Oswald, and Fenga. Backs and receivers, Nga has set BYU freshman records this fall. Tonga's a touchdown magnet. Pitt is a nice safety valve. Collie and Reed have big play talent. Second down, let's call it four. After the six yard completion to Reed. Max Hall getting much more comfortable with all the checks and rerouting in the BYU system. He'll keep it on the ground here with Joe Seminoff, who tallied a, a touchdown a weekend ago. Kelly Griffin was there to make the stop for TCU. Front four for the uh, Horn Frogs. Tommy Blake will make an impact today. Griffin is sound. Moore is sturdy. Ortiz is a sack master. Linebackers, Hawthorne tackles everything in sight. Phillip flies to the football. Chart five in the secondary for the Frogs. Priest and Sanders on the corners. Roach, Bonner, and Hodge all shuffled positions last week with success. Third down and six after the loss of two for the senior, Seminole. Hall to throw. Has his man right on target there to the tight end, Dennis Pitta who has become one of Hall's favorites. He got a step on Hodge to pick up first down yardage. Well, it's gonna to be tough out there. Pay attention to coverage because the ground seems a little soggy, a little wet. So you're gonna see more coverage that's right up tight instead of staying away because it's gonna be very tough to recover if you're a DB out there. Mostly long sleeves in the stands. Temperatures in the low 50s right now and expected to keep tumbling here in the Wasatch Mountain Range of Provo, Utah. Cougars on first and 10, the opening drive of the contest. The ground game in evidence. Tonga, Unga, Vakapuna, the Tongan trio expected to wreak havoc tonight. Washington made the tackle after a pickup of two. There's where you see the defensive team speed of TCU come to play. Darrell Washington, the great job of finding the right angle, not getting caught in the wash, and then getting to the ball. What an athlete he is, especially on special teams when it comes to punt blocking. As we've seen a couple of times. Second down and eight for the Cougars, who send Pitta through the formation. Hall looking over the middle and throws a strike to Pitta, just away from the outstretched hands of Robert Henson. Little bit of pressure that time, not much. He had a very nice pocket to sit in, but more importantly, the, the grab by Pitta with the arm of Henson outstretched in front of him and it, able to keep his eyes on the ball. The offensive coordinator there, Robert and I, knows he's got three solid tight ends that he can weave into third down effectiveness. On the season, BYU is below 40% in this category. Now third and five, out of the eye. With Hall under the center, Aulai, who did not allow a sack a season ago. There was movement before the play began. Flag hits the turf. Before the ball was snapped, delay of game. Offense, number 15. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Head coach Bronco Mendenhall likes his team to be uh, buttoned up, and that was uh, a bit too much time on the delay. Yeah, and, and you, if you're Bronco... You're upset either at your quarterback for not looking and seeing and understanding what the clock is, or you're upset at, at yourself because you didn't get, you got, you, your coaching staff didn't get the play in fast enough. Max Hall bringing that right hand to his mouth. As we mentioned, the temperatures are expected to fall into the 40s before the night is through. Third down and long. Time to throw, now as the protection breaks down, Hall will sprint to safety, and he's got more than enough room for the first down as he creeps out of bounds at the TCU 15. A pickup of 20. Glenn Parker, our, B, our Under Armour advantage. The keys to success tonight spell out like this. 
Well, I'll tell you what, when you look about Under Armour advantages and what they want for TCU, they've got to keep their offense up tempo. But talk about reading comprehension. Their, de their defense must understand the quick read and not get caught. BYU, unga, unga, unga. The more they get him in the game, the better. And they've got to get to Dalton on defense, make him sweat and make mistakes. And uh, Semenov flank Hall in the gun. First and 10 from the TCU 15. This is Unga. With a step to the corner. Unga on his way. Touchdown, Cougars. Great job by Harvey Unga there. One step inside, throws Bonner, and Unga has enough speed to get back outside on the corner. He is deceptively fast, deceptively fast for a guy his size. It's the first thing the coaches were saying about Unga when they saw him in camp, just how big he is, but then explosive, and they knew he had limitless potential. He is, he was, they were talking to us about him and, and just couldn't believe how much he meant to the team so soon, how comfortable he came in this system. Mitch Payne is on for the extra point try out of the hold of Matt Allen. Good catch there. And Payne drills it on through. BYU ultra effective in its opening drive. A little less than four minutes in, the Cougars have the advantage. Harvey Unga has his ninth TD on the season. Six of them on the ground after this rumble to pay dirt. They have been packing them into Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo all season long. Four straight sellouts. Have to be pleased with the way the hometown team started. On top, 7-0. Harvey Unga from 15 yards out, giving the Cougars the lead, and this BYU team is on a five-game win streak. Well, it certainly helps. It starts with special teams. You get the ball at your own 50. You get it out to the 35. One personal foul before you ever take a snap here at midfield. I'll tell you right there, Gary Patterson not happy starting the game off on a personal foul in a short field. Mitch Payne's about to hit it. Donald Massey is deep along with Marcus Brock for the Horned Frogs in the white. Massey settles under this one from the five, slips, and then spins his way near the 24-yard line. A return of 19 yards. The tackle made by Scott Johnson. The TCU offense is under the direction of Andy Dalton, the first redshirt freshman to start at TCU in five years. Clean slate last week. No troublesome pressure-filled turnovers. Game management is what they are looking for from him. They have a scheme in place to protect him. Well, number one, they like to run the ball. That'll help him. Number two, move him out of the pocket on occasion so that you cut down the number of reads that he has to make. Aaron Brown and Joseph Turner both in the backfield. Dalton throws quickly and hits immediately to one of his favorite targets there. That was Irvin Dickerson, stopped by Cale Buchanan. On the offensive line, they've been battling through some injuries. Lindner did not play last week with an ankle problem. Schluter's a powerful knockdown guy. Montgomery's had a cast on in practice. Backs and receivers expect to see both Brown and Turner, a highlight machine and a muscle man. Cunningham, Dickerson, and Brock all among the starters. Brock was on the board a week ago in a very impressive win over New Mexico. Dalton tucks it down and runs. He's got more first down yardage nearing midfield. Well, what do they do? They came out empty backfield both times, letting, thing, letting Dalton get it done. Glenn on defense, BYU features the front three. Dulan is steady, Manu Malayuna has fit right in as a true freshman. Jorgensen's been outstanding. Playmaking linebackers a staple here. All these guys cover ground. Papinga and Keel lead the team in tackles. Four seniors in the secondary, Buchanan and Criddle at the corners. Gooch can be the Grinch at the holidays. They put a lot of trust in Hotchkiss, too. Horn Frogs will run it straight ahead to the interior of that BYU defense. With a power back, Joseph Turner. Gary Patterson says he is extremely important to TCU's success. Absolutely. Last week, it comes out with, he has 28 attempts last week. He gets his first start against New Mexico. Goes for 115 yards. He's a big back. We use Aaron Brown on the corners. Use him for speed. Turner's a guy you can pound people with. Both teams moving the ball effectively on their opening drive. As Aaron Brown, the preseason conference offensive player of the year, got wrapped up by David Nixon. The junior out of College Station, Texas, will be all fired up for this one tonight. Aaron Brown, who had a knee injury 
played very sparingly a week ago in that big win over New Mexico, which improved TCU's record in the process overall to five and four. They tangle with a BYU team that is six and two. Fans getting loud here on third down and five. Dalton to throw and just off the hands of his intended target. Walter Bryant slashed in there. Buchanan was close by, practically in his ear hole. Well, if TCU did nothing else, they changed field position. But to take a look, Andy Dalton back. He, on the last time he was in an empty backfield, he went right, he took off, looked back to his left and fired. This time, same receiver, off to his right, looks right at him and fires, but this time coverage is on him rather than being off. And that's what you're going to find at third down. That's something Andy Dalton's going to have to learn. Derek Wash drops back to punt. Bryce Mawika is ready, standing at the 10 for BYU. Wash has been one of the conference's best. He hits this one a mile high. Mawika says fair catch, and it bounds down, out of bounds, close to the five. Beautifully done there by Derek Wash. BYU has the advantage early. The Cougars get the football back in front of the little ones next. The BYU faithful in Provo. Happy with what they've seen so far in the game's first six minutes. The Cougars on top 7-0. Bronco Mendenhall's feature back, Harvey Unga, slashing in from 15 yards. And now the Cougars get their second chance with the football, albeit trapped deep in their own territory after a fine punt by Derek Wash. Well, we said before we were talking how important special teams will be to this game. And already we've seen it with a, a great return and now a great punt on the other side. And the graphic just showed you this BYU team is used to getting out in front. Max Hall out of the shotgun with three wide receivers to throw to. Drops it off into the flat to Unga, and a nice tackle was made there. As we share some time here with Tim Neverett, he wants to talk about the BYU offense and its complexity. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's really, it's not that complex. You know, you talk to offensive coordinator Robert and I about this offense. He said, it's basically a few plays and about five or six different things can happen off of each play. Not just the quarterback makes a read in the BYU offense, the receivers make a read as well, and they have different options off their pass route. So it may look a little more complicated than it actually is, but they move the ball real well. Robert says, Tim, that it's tough to master. He says guys like McMahon and Young and Bosco and Detmer all picked it up quickly, but it took them time to master it, much in the way that Max Hall is getting initiated to it this fall. Yeah, you put it right. He, you know, he likened it to anything else where uh, you can kind of be good, but can you really be great? And, and that's so true in so many things that it's easy to be good at something, but it's tough to be great at something. And that's what he talks about with his quarterbacks. They have to become great for this team to be great. As Hall gets a personnel change into the lineup, and he'll wind up under center here on third down and two. Two tight end set, power look straight ahead, and the Horn Frogs, who were brilliant defensively a week ago in limiting a high-powered New Mexico team, stiffen at just the right time there. And that is going to force BYU into a punt. Well, there was a little bit of penetration early. That that forced the running back to make a cut laterally before he ever got to the line of scrimmage, slowed things down, allowed the defense to close in. Ryan Bonner will drop back deep to receive this punt from C.J. Santiago. The Horn Frogs have been very pleased with their special teams, particularly this unit, both from a blocking standpoint and a return standpoint. They better find Darrell Washington. A low liner, Bonner from midfield. Ooh, and he is undercut quickly. Chopping him down was Kelly Papinga. Our Aflac home versus away trivia challenge is coming up in the second quarter. Get your cell phone ready to play along for your chance to win great prizes. Each game, one lucky fan will win a plasma television. Play all season long. The grand prize is a trip for two to the Hula Bowl in Hawaii. Our lucky winner from last week, Eric Hem Hemisath from Des Moines, Iowa. The Hula Bowl. The Hula Bowl in Hawaii. That's where they put it. And I'm betting the temperatures will not be in the 40s. As Dalton throws on target. Mm. The hitting really intensifying in this contest. Orby Hotchkiss 
there to hammer Marcus Brock after a pickup of nine. So you're saying this isn't a pillow fight? No. You're right. Not a pillow fight. Well, you know, uh, you know me. I, I love contact and hitting and all of those things. Of course, I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu and the Thali Tudo. The, everybody gets after it. And they call a pillow fight like a, a trevesero, they call it. Uh, using a pillow to hit somebody instead of really smacking them. These guys are smacking out here. All season long, you've taught me so much. I hate the fact that this is our last game together. Dalton to throw, and now he'll run. Oh, beautiful little spin move, gains the first down yardage inside the BYU 30. Well, one thing Andy Dalton's already shown us is he's willingness to tuck it and go, whether it's planned or whether he has to, he has to improvise. Right here, half roll, limited read. I don't see what I like. Take it and go and get positive yardage. That's why they want to limit his reads so that he doesn't make too many decisions on each snap. One decision, now go. It was Andre Salisbury Glenn who made the tackle wrapping up on Dalton. Salisbury out of camp called the most improved player at any position for the Cougars. Joseph Turner bounding his way. Close to the 25, Dulon makes the stop in concert with Brian Keel. Well, you see the game plan coming in for TCU. They spread a little bit, they'll go empty backfield and throw the ball. Then they'll come out and they'll roll the quarterback. That gets everybody moving. Now they come right back with Joseph Turner and try to smash you. So they're trying to tire out this quick, quick defense, get them moving a little bit, and then try to smash them with some power too. So Mike Schultz has a very definite plan in action. You can see it coming out. Second and seven. We saw these guys a few weeks ago against Utah. They appeared tired. There's that little Rocket screen. Completion to uh, Jimmy Young as we once again send you to the sideline for Tim Neverett's comment on Andy Dalton. Well, Dalton completing the pass there, but he is on a very short leash as far as Gary Patterson is concerned. He will pull the trigger and pull Andy Dalton if he throws an interception. Marcus Jackson will go in next. If Jackson were to throw an interception, he'll go to true freshman Zach Eskridge. Patterson not afraid to use three quarterbacks in this game tonight. He was saying, heck, if a safety gets burned, I bring him over onto the sideline. Why should a quarterback be allowed to get away with it as they run the option to Brown? And the Cougars' defense was quick to recover. Staffieri stringing it out. Well, that's where you try to run that. You run the, the option into the boundary, but with the speed of this BYU defense, it's a little tough to do. You take Dalton right here. There's one read. He's got, <laughs> he's got two. Two linebackers, David Nixon and Staffiera, standing right in the face. He's got to make that decision. He makes the right one. Don't hold it. Let someone else take the shot. But credit that BYU defense. A lot of speed out there. Gary Patterson's going to send his trusty field goal kicker onto the turf. This man for Dini. This one from 37. You see the seasonal numbers. At a very high percentage. And this one is curled right through for Manfredini getting the Horn Frogs on the board. Congratulations come to the place kicker on his way to the sideline. BYU holds the advantage 7 3 in Provo on Versus. Pretty much just getting started with college football on Versus this Thursday night in the Mountain West. Joe Beninati, Glenn Parker, Tim Nevert with you. BYU scored early. Harvey Unga rambling in from 15. Manfredini has responded with a field goal in front of the blue and white supporters. Combs puts his boot into this one. Mawika chased to the eight. And then Mawika tiptoed on that sideline and stepped on the paint. Friends on Saturday. Kansas State one went away from being bowl eligible and Freeman and Nelson's been a winning combination for the Wildcats. They'll need to claw their way to victory against the desperate Cornhuskers of Nebraska versus college football. It's on Saturday at 1230 Eastern. An amazing fall for the Cornhuskers this season. You mean an amazing autumn or an amazing drop in the uh... a fall from grace if yes. you will. It has been. Awful if you're a Husker fan, that's for sure. But as we see special teams coming back into play, BYU on a short, on a long, long field here. Been smiling a lot more here in Provo, Utah than they have been in Lincoln, Nebraska. As Hall comes up quickly. Max Hall, very precise. Loves to look in the direction of his tight ends. Soto and George and Hitta. 
and you can see five for five out of the shoot. Well, talking with Gary Patterson last night, he, he was pretty obvious the way he said we really have to take their tight ends and their running backs out of this game, and that'll take most of what Max Hall likes to do right out of the, right away from it. He wanted to limit the yak, right, the yards That's after the catch. Look at you breaking out the, the, the lingo. I oh, love the it. The lingo. As that's too tall for Austin Colley. Max Hall, in his uh, most recent outing against Colorado State, was on the money again. Well, you know, they did everything right on the offense. They would be concerned that Max Hall wasn't maybe coming along. And then last week they had a great op offensive output from Max Hall from this entire offense. They, they ran the ball well. They Max Hall, of course, found his targets well. They were able to take it to the Rams. In, a, in a, another Mountain West Conference win for this BYU team. Saw touchdown passes there from Hall to Colley and Reed. Austin Colley with a big, big day. Eight catches for 111 yards against Colorado State, which put up a fuss. As Hall drops this one off, a little crossing route to the tight end hitter. Max Hall had a player draped all over him and still was able to make that completion good for 15. Now, you know, the thing about this play is this is a, just a drag route, but I want you to watch what happens on the right side. That's a defensive end trying to cover him. That's Chase Ortiz dropping off. He can't do it, so now that leaves Hawthorne to trace him down. You, you want to zone blitz, but if you want to take out their tight ends, you don't zone blitz and leave a defensive end on a tight end. As Hall rolls to his right, the pass falls incomplete. As we drift below four minutes in this opening quarter with BYU, on top of TCU and Robert and I checking with his quarterback on how to solve this second and long situation. Robert and I good naturedly was uh, addressing us yesterday in the conference room talking about just how quick a defense TCU has. Yeah, he, he had a lot of respect for him. Of course, they've played a lot of important games over the last few years. And a lot of respect for how fast this defense is, how well they recognize, and how fast they key. Which, of course, we know that's how they took advantage of Arizona early in the year, how they've taken advantage of quick key teams, is to get them out of position. He mentioned you take one step and they know where you're going. Good throw there. Austin Colley has first down yardage. As that ball was on its way before he made the break, Raphael Priest, who has started every game the last couple of years, made the tackle. Well, good throw, good catch, but importance protection. What are you going to do? You got Chase Ortiz, All-American candidate, big-time pass rusher. You double-team him, and then you slide. So you bring your guard out. That's Travis Bright getting out there, Oswald out there, trying to get out and protect. You double-team him, you slide to him, and then you push protection wide around the quarterback. Gives him a lane to throw through. First and 10 for the Cougars. Mm -hmm. Straight ahead, he powers his way very close to midfield. Nearly eight more on that. As David Roach, who has switched from weak safety to free safety, was there to bring him to the earth. Well, you see what power football is there. You see a not only a fullback, but a big offensive guard pull through a hole. That's a lot of meat coming through. When there's a little bit of a, a wedge, now you got Unga, and now Unga's no small man himself rushing through there. Mark Weber's the O-line coach here in Provo, and he's done a nice job of knitting together good offensive lines for a long time. This one, when he took over, had a lot of pieces in place, as Hall is too strong going up top for Matt Allen. Well, that's something that, that Max Hall is going to have to get better at. You know, he, he throws a, a hard ball to begin with. You saw it with some of his tight ends. You've seen it, the high one to Collie earlier, and now this one. You've just got to understand sometimes, give your guy a chance. He'll get there. Quarterbacks a lot of times want to throw it hard, thinking that I'll put it to where only my guy can get it, but it doesn't do any good if it takes his fingers off. Max Hall taking the reins this season for John Beck, now working in the National Football League with Miami and waiting his first chance to start there. Cougars, of, uh, go ahead. A lot of fans calling for John Beck to start down in Miami. What a performance he put on against TCU. This one's over the middle and a hard hit delivered. Jason Phillips rattling Unga and forcing that ball incomplete. Phillips, the son of a coach, the junior out of uh, Waller, Texas. Well, you know, he, he's like a quarterback back there. That's what they like about coaches' sons. If you watched him there, he slid out, got into coverage. The minute the ball was thrown, closed the distance, put his helmet on the football, knocked the ball loose. It's sometimes the simplest things are the hardest things to get done, but they're what win football games for you. Keep your eyes peeled on 41 in the white. Darrell Washington, he has blocked three punts this season. 
Ryan Bonner is deep for the Horned Frogs. Santiago drills this one. It will land at the two and carry him into the end zone. TCU will go first and 10 from its own 20 with two and a half to go in the opening quarter. Well, I'll tell you, we, we talk about the, the special teams coming to play. TCU puts it at the five. Their partner sticks it at the 20. The big difference. Taking a look now at Lowe's building towards the BCS. Ohio State comfortably perched on top. LSU and Oregon right there. And the Ducks were duck a la range wow. in the bowl last year. BYU put them away swiftly as Dalton keeps this one. Shrugged down to the turf by the cat back there, Hotchkiss. Well, now, you know, normally you don't want your quarterback sticking his shoulder in there and trying to knock somebody down. But you know what? This quarterback has nothing to lose. He realized I throw an interception to make a mistake. I'm off the field. Coach has already let me know it. So I might as well try to take some people out, make some plays, get it done. That's what's I like what Coach Patterson has done. He's instilled a, a go for it attitude in his quarterback. Two touchdowns, no interceptions last week as the Horn Frogs smoke New Mexico 37-0 at G. Carter Stadium. Aaron Brown dancing with it at the line of scrimmage. And the Cougars stuff him pretty much for no gain there. Jan Jorgensen, who was a tackle machine last week, he had a Baker's dozen, teaming up with Papinga, who leads the team in tackles on the year. Well, Jan Jorgensen is just one of those hard nosed He's your typical BYU kid. Uh, not oversized, not overly fast, just plays smart, plays mature, doesn't get beat, doesn't beat himself. Leads the team in sacks, Glenn. Second down and eight for the Horn Frogs in right. Dalton tucks it down and then gets swarmed. Papinga's all over him there. Papinga did a great job of closing distance, getting getting to him, not falling for the pump fake, realizing, hey, throw the ball, I'll take you down. And you'll watch, you'll see number 46, Kelly Papinga, will slide with him. He's outside, you can see him right there. Now watch him, he's looking, he knows there's nowhere to go with this. Great job of Papinga closing the distance and forcing a third and long, an important third and long for field position now. Papinga's big brother Brady holds a BYU all-time sack record you see kelly's numbers aren't too shabby in their own right this is third and long third and eight dalton to throw into the flat for turner and it was low and the horn frogs will punt it again well when you get a look here he's got some time but where's the pressure come from when it gets there? We talked about him earlier, Jan Jorgensen, getting pressure right up in his face, making him throw the dump out, and making him throw a pass he really didn't want to throw. Derek Wash drops deep to punt for TCU, averaging on the season just a shade less than 44. He's on that Ray Guy watch list, and I'll tell you, Ray Guy, you talk about a guy that, that opened all of our eyes to what a weapon a punter can be. Just remember the flexibility he had. Mawika from the 12 gets nailed. Perfect timing there on the special teams tackle. Ibilo Ye came flying in. Folks, the NHL's back on versus. It can continues uh, next week, Monday. Southeast Division leading Carolina, tangling with Florida. Then on Tuesday, we head to the Western Conference. Central Division leading Red Wings meeting with the Blues. The NHL on versus next Monday and Tuesday night. Henrik Zetterberg has been perhaps the best player in the NHL in the Motor City. And if there's a, a, a better hockey town, there's not many than the Motor City. And that Carolina squad that you'll see on Monday on versus has been among the NHL leaders in goals in the first five weeks. Max Hall slips it over the middle and high for his intended target. They were looking for Unga on that little flash route out of the backfield. Well, what TC is doing very well is they're coming up. They're not letting Harvey Unga make his move. He, they're either forcing him to protect or they're coming up stopping him short and saying, now you're gonna, we're going to play you head up. We're not going to play inside and let you option to the outside. We're not going to play outside and let you option to the inside. We're playing you head up. Now you pick and you can't separate from us. Max Hall under the center, Aula'i. And Unga not going far on the ground either. David Hawthorne comes up crowing. Hawthorne, the senior, 
So many of these guys hail from the great state of Texas. In fact, 87% of the roster comes from the state of Texas for TCU. At the outset of the year, the expectations were so high for the Horn Frogs, and Gary Patterson, their head coach, said, you know what, I think they were too high. They were too high considering what they had, what they lost, and the fact that they had a quarterback coming back who'd never taken a snap. Yeah, so many times people who, uh, who are writing about teams or, or telling you how a team should do, don't look at all the facts. As this one's lofted out there, Pitta continues to be on the receiving end of the Hall volleys. He got a step on Tory Stewart, and this sophomore is rounding into quite a target for the Cougars. All right, you talk about your simple go routes, it's all it was. We are done with 15 minutes. BYU has the advantage. The Cougars, the lead over the Horn Frogs. Harvey Unga with some fireworks in Provo. BYU in front after one quarter with college football on versus. They've had four straight sellouts here at LaBelle Edwards Stadium, the most in one year since 1999. And the blue and white have turned it up. This BYU squad at six and two, they've won five straight. They've won 12 in a row against the Mountain West. Max Hall under center out of the eye. Fui Vakapuna, who's had a tough year with respect to injuries. Gains close to five there, but there's a flag down. Well, came in where a holding normally is called. That and the fact that he threw it one of the big guys. When you're running power, you get angles. And when you get angles, you get guys that spin out. When they spin out, you tend to grab a little bit. Holding, so. offense, number 88. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of foul. Replay, first down. They got the tight end there, Andrew George. Well, we'll see what they're looking at and see if we can find it. Right there in your picture, right in the middle of it. Just gets a little bit of jersey. That's what happens, well, as I said. Guy spun out of him, and he grabbed a little bit. The official sees a little bit of jersey get pulled away, especially when you're out in the open. You've got to be smarter than that. You need to hold Stephen Hodge from time to time. A whale of a game he had last week for the Horn Frogs. Hall looking over the middle, going through the progressions now, throws this one sidearm and short of uh, Manasa Tonga. Well, he, you know, one thing we talked with Gary Patterson last night, remember what he said about John Beck, we'd hang all over him and he could still throw the 15 yard out. Max Hall's not quite that quarterback yet. So they get a little pressure on him, they get into his legs and you can see it right there. The ball goes into the turf instead of being where his man can two, grab it. Two quarterbacks just making their mark with yeah. respect to Hall and Dalton taking over for mm -hmm. Beck and Ballard respectively. I think it's six and two, Max Hall is represented himself very well so far. A marquee matchup in the Mountain West set for you Thursday night here on versus 7-3 Cougars. Harvey Unga has the touchdown. As Hall pivots away from some pressure, finds his man, Colley. He's alone, it's a foot race now. Colley inside the 20, cuts inside of Bonner, inside the 10, and down at the six. Max Hall made something out of nothing. Sure did, and he did a great job. Number one, it's, we got crossing routes out of the backfield. Left, the man gets behind, Collie gets behind a little bit. He's gonna be on the left side of our camera here, but watch, you're gonna have a safety. Bonner is gonna jump a little too soon. Excuse me, Roach jumps a little too soon. Doesn't play the ball, plays the man, and what ends up happening? It gets through all of them, and you got Collie on a long one. 66 yards worth of real estate. Max Hall loves it. Gary Patterson has said his team has been prone to giving up the big play, and there it just bit him. Yeah, uh, you know, when you've got a safety and he comes over, and he jumps for the ball instead of making a play on the man who's behind you. That's exactly what'll happen. You'll, you'll get behind him like Colley did, and he gets some big yards. Nose of the football on the six, first in goal. Allen comes in short motion, and then, hello, Tommy Blake. It's Tommy Blake, but I'll tell you the determining factor was Chase Ortiz. Chase Ortiz beats his man clean. Max Hall is going to panic. Watch. Max Hall sees pressure from the right, so he goes left right into Tommy Blake. Tommy Blake can thank Chase Ortiz for that. Here's Ortiz. Look at this. This is a great move. Up and under. Pressure's there. Forces Max Hall right in to Tommy Blake. Arguably two of the very best defensive ends 
in the conference on the same team. Uh, they, you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you what, that was great camera work right there. We got to see both of them working and see why it happened. A loss of eight. Hall out of the eye to throw. He'll fade for Pitta. Touchdown! Tremendous catch by did he lose it? Yeah, he lost it, but the flag is down. They're going to call interference one way or the other here. As Pitta had to spin inside out, got his hands on it. The flag is going to go against TCU. And we'll see where they're going to put mark this ball. Tell you, pass, inter pass interference. Defense. Number six, ball replaced to the two yard line. First down. If, if holding is the mis most misunderstood call on one side, I have to think pass interference is on the other. When I watch this, I see two guys fighting for position. Both guys arms on each other. Both guys go up for the ball. I have a hard time calling that pass interference. Uh, I understand what the officials are looking at, but I don't understand why they're calling. Seminoff is the fullback, Unga the tailback. Pitta, the H back. A little misdirection and Seminoff was stacked up inside. So that ball bounding out of the hands of Dennis Pitta. And now second in goal for BYU. One thing Gary Patterson talked about last night with Bronco about Bronco Mendenhall and their mentality is they really seek to once they get a just a seven point lead, any lead is to speed the game up by running the ball and letting that clock tick away. And, and we're seeing it in this drive. This has been a very long drive. They bring in the big guns. Two tight end set here. Tonga hammered at the goal line, hat to hat. Tonga was drilled by Roach. That was a huge hit. If you hit Manasseh Tonga that hard, pick his feet up off the ground and put him to the ground. That is a hit. He's got good lead blockers. And you see a guy's feet come out of the ground and spin a good 180 like that. You've got a safety coming up hard. Hodge was knifing in there. Roach finished him off high. This is third in goal. Eye formation for the Cougars. Pitta comes in motion. Play action into the flat. There's seven off for the touchdown. This play works at any level. Play action on the goal line, using your fullback as your man into the flat works on any level. And it worked against TCU here. Samanoff, who had a five-yard TD catch against Colorado State a week ago, converts there from one. And this will bring on Payne for the extra point. In the early stages of the second quarter of college football on versus a Mountain West showdown so far led by the locals 14 three. The big play on the drive was Hall to college. The little play on the drive was this one into the flat Seminoff from one BYU on top. Max Hall loves it. BYU has won its last 10 games here at LaBelle Edwards Stadium. The last time they won 11 straight home games, 1991. That's what they are attempting to do this time around. Seminoff celebrating his touchdown. Reception from Max Hall just a few moments ago. 10 plays to go a little less than 90 yards. The big play in that drive, a 66-yard connection from Hall to Collin. That and a big third down connection from their own 10 or so. Kind of broke open the drop. The kickoff curls to Massey from the 12. Slips one tackler. Spins and twists his way close to the 30 as we revisit the touchdown throw. Well, this play works on all levels. I'm going to show you why. You bring a man in motion, he blocks down. Tight end will run like that. You bring pressure here. Everybody thinks it's a dive, except your fullback is slipping right in the flat. Watch it works. It works perfection. Linebackers, everybody goes with that little bit of motion. Now it's too late. You'll never gain ground back. As you saw right there, it's just too simple. And it works on every level I've played on. 
Sophomore quarterback Marcus Jackson has come in off the bench for TCU and is now in the shotgun behind the center Blake Schluter. Jackson will tuck it down, run that little quarterback delay, and bound out of bounds after a pickup of close to three. Gary Patterson likes to give Andy Dalton and probably a series just to watch the game from the sideline. Thinks it helps with the young quarterback gain a perspective from there. Uh-huh, and I think Ben Criddle, number 21 for your BYU defense, is not going to want to see that play on the re on, on any type of film room on, on uh, Monday when they go in. Or, excuse me, they'll do it tomorrow on Friday because he got run over. He didn't realize the size of Marcus Jackson coming out. Second and seven. The quarterback keeps it again. Twists off of one and then gets deposited into the turf. 14-3, the most important stat so far in this one, but some other numbers are going to be passing before your eyes. Big passing numbers, as usual, for BYU. Yeah, and that's why they want to have Andy Dalton watch a little bit because he's, he's been all right when he's tucked it run, but he hasn't really done a job of getting the ball out of his hands and into his receiver. Cougars have forced TCU to punt three times already tonight. Third down and five for Marcus Jackson. Good throw. Making the break on the ball there. The pass was complete. Irvin Dickerson, who leads the team in touchdown catches, got to step on Criddle. Well, Marcus Jackson steps back. He's got the arm to deliver this. Criddle is right there. So that tells you just how good a catch by Dickerson this is because the hands in his face, it's a good job of getting himself back to the ball. That little step coming back to the ball enables him to just grab it enough that Criddle can't get in there. Joseph Turner pulling his way to the interior. Kelly Papinga was the first man to greet him. You're looking at some of the other scores. On an evening of college football this Thursday night, we are on versus with TCU and BYU, two of the preseason favorites in the conference. BYU has the top rung. They are undefeated in conference play. And there's a lot of teams in the Mountain West right now watching this game, hoping TCU can get something going and, and, and put a pressure on BYU and give them a chance to get to the top. One of those has to be 7-3 and three overall Air Force, which has a date in South Bend this weekend. Jackson's protection breaks down, and he is flung to the turf. Dan Jorgensen does it again. Well, Dan Jorgensen works. It's what he does. So he said, is he fast? Not, not overly strong, not really, but he works. You watch, he's going to come in from the right side of your screen, just works past the center, gets himself right there in position, and does a good job of grabbing the ball. Take a look. Blake Schluter can't get his feet over in time. Dan Jorgensen, good job understanding the scheme of the, uh, of the defense. Number one, slide to the gap you're supposed to be in. Number two, go vertical. Put pressure on the feet of the offensive lineman to match your feet. Plenty of tackles for loss this year for Jorgensen. TCU has not converted on a third down so far tonight. This is third and a bunch, third and 17. Setting up a screen, a throwback, and wow! No running room for Marcus Brock. He got hammered. It's Jorgensen again. Yeah, playing out of his spot. He, all he does is he sees pressure. They run what kind of a double screen move. One. Part of your lineman running one way, other lineman running the other, then the jet screen behind. And he just reads it perfectly and comes and closes ground quick to get the big hit. So Marcus Jackson takes off his lid on his way back to the sideline. Wash has been a busy boy punting. Mawika is ready, standing at about his 20 for BYU. Mawika saying get away from it as it curls out of bounds. BYU in control in this first half on top 14-3 as we're getting late. Just uh, 8 minutes and 27 seconds to go. We'll get you back for more in the second after these words. 14-3, BYU with the lead here in the second quarter at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. We're talking football tonight, but it won't be long. We'll be talking basketball here on Versus, and we'll see this guy's team. Dave Rose, the head coach of the BYU Cougars. Dave, thanks for spending a minute with us. I know you had an exhibition game last night. How do you like your team? Well, I think we're coming along. We're progressing well. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, we, you know, we tip off on Saturday afternoon, and so uh, it'll be a good start for us and see how we, you know, see how we come along. You're picked to win the conference. That put any pressure on you to start the season? Well, I don't, you know, I don't think it's any more pressure than uh, what our coaches expect every year, and uh, the, the fact that uh, 
you know, the, the media has picked us to win it. I think is uh, is good for our players and just kind of shows that uh, they've been able to uh, over the last year or two gain some respect in the league. Well, Ryan Bonner with the interception for TCU. Ryan Bonner, right place, right time. After his switch from strong safety to weak safety, he picks this one off from Max Hall. Pressure on Max Hall coming in from the corner. You'll see Roach right there puts puts a little hit on him. What happens? Bonner's in position playing free safety to grab that ball. Here you'll see Roach coming in. Takes Unga right back into the ground. Gets a little hit. Excuse me, that's Hodge with the pressure, not Roach. That is the seventh career interception for Brian Bonner. He's the active leader for the Horn Frogs. Andy Dalton with play action and all day to throw, lobbing this one to the sideline and out of bounds. As he was looping it up there intended for Aaron Brown, we return to the sidelines, Tim and Dave. Well, every time we start to do something with Coach Rose down here, something big happens, a 66-yard play or an interception. Uh, but you're going to get some stuff done on the court this year, and we're looking forward to seeing your game in Salt Lake City against Michigan State coming up. Well, you know, we've got a lot of basketball to play before we get to that, but we've got a couple of really big games on our schedule in the preseason, and, you know, all of it is to help prepare us for a conference schedule. And I think, obviously, uh, Michigan State is uh, a really good team, and uh, hopefully our guys will be ready for that game. Second down at 10. The Horn Frogs will keep it on the ground. Trying to carve into this BYU advantage as we send it to Tim to wrap up with Dave. Coach, you open up against Long Beach State. That's coming up pretty soon. That's a pretty good team. You got to take them on on the road. Well, last year they went to the NCAA tournament. They won the Big West Championship. And they, they lost a lot of players, similar to us. We lost quite a few players from our team. So uh, it's an exciting time of year, and our guys have been working hard. Now it's, it's time to go out and, and see uh, where we're at. Coach, thanks. Look forward to seeing you on the 8th of December. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Gentlemen, we appreciate it. Dalton, who's been leading the team in rushing in this first half, scampered along that line of scrimmage on third and six, but did not get it. Well, Didn't get anywhere close to it. The same thing they did on the last third. When they were into the boundary, they ran option into the boundary, and BYU's defense just too fast at this point. They're, they're covering every angle. And as a matter of fact, you can't, you can't run the option if there's two defenders there, because you have to option off of one of them, and that puts the other one in a position to make a play. Graphic we just showed uncharacteristically large numbers of yardage for Dalton in this first half. It's one of the Cougars is down on the turf. BYU in front of TCU by a 14-3 margin. And Staffieri, who was there on the tackle, is the man slow to get back up. Markel Staffieri out of Del Mar, California. And thankfully, we can report after the fact that his family's home in that area in Southern California was not lost. At one point in time, we were hearing whispers that it may have been. And Staffieri, the senior, who had all those hamstring injuries a season ago, comes gingerly to the sideline. Born right here in Provo. See Del Mar listed as the hometown. Part of that ultra active linebacking core for Bronco Mendenhall. Manfredini comes off the sideline, looking to convert this one from 36 yards. I have a feeling Bronco Mendenhall will trade field goals for touchdowns all night long. If you do the math, you're in good shape. Manfredini does his job and makes it 14-6. We were just discussing basketball action to come on versus. Looking forward to the tip-off of our live schedule in the Mountain West. And there's a real good one right off the top. Louisville and UNLV. Well, you, that's a great one. And then Michigan State, of course, Izzo bringing the troops in. And how about Bobby Knight going into New Mexico? That's another great battle. So a lot of good, lot of good basketball coming in on versus. That's just the first few weeks of coverage. We'll have the men's and women's Mountain West Conference Championship games in mid-March on this network. You know, we bring the uh, basketball coach on with Tim and Maybe we ought to get a gymnastics coach on for Tim. We keep putting him next to guys that are a little too tall. 
This gentleman will not share any of that sandwich with us. No. Oh, wait a minute. They're starting to bundle up as the temperatures are in the high 40s. BYU leading TCU 14-6. Well, TCU has to stop BYU on this drive where they have put themselves uh, in a position that is desperate. And it's already desperate according to Gary Patterson. He said any lead that BYU gets is tough to overcome because of how well they eat clock. Cougars coming running with it. It's Austin Colley, and he gets bear hugged to the turf. It's 14-6 BYU. Time now for our Aflac home versus away trivia challenge. BYU, TCU, they combined for 12 TDs here back in 05. Which individual player scored four times? Todd Watkins of BYU, Aaron Brown of TCU, or Corey Rogers of TCU? Get your cell phone, text 1, 2, or 3 to 837-787. That spells versus. All correct answers during the broadcast entered to win a plasma television. We're giving one of those babies away every game. Watkins, Brown, or Rogers? Ah, fly. 51 to 50 was the final in that game in overtime, by the way. Cougars in the eye. Unga. Cartwheel down there as it was Bonner coming up to make the tackle. Brian Bronner already having himself a game. One of the leaders on that defense, but more importantly, He's what they call a determinator. He kind of determines what happens out there more than just making plays. Determinator, I like it. His nickname is Six Shooter. Both of those are good. Well, the Six Shooter right arm of Hall continues to find Dennis Pitta. Pitta got the jump on Six Shooter right there for a gain of 13. Well, from his safety spot, it's a long way for him to get over there on Pitta. We saw it earlier in the game where a safety doesn't quite get there and, and Austin Cauley has a big gain. This time, Ryan Bonner with a nice tackle and if he misses him, it's gone. So, safeties are a lot, under a lot of pressure against this BYU offense. Dennis Pitt is starting to put up Johnny Harleen type numbers. He's got a couple of 100 plus yard receiving games this season. Harleen and Coates, outstanding tight ends for the Cougars this season ago. Hall gonna put it up again. Over the middle, a rocket that's too much mustard on that. Pitta was complaining. He thought he was being held. And uh, I don't know what he was watching because I watched him most of that entire play, and there was no holding on that. He got undercut towards the end, but the ball was in the air. But you got to make your case. you got to complain a little. Maybe they'll look at the next time and throw the flag. As Pitta continues to plead his case, we drift below six minutes to go in the opening half with college football on versus. For this crew, our last telecast of the season, and so many different men and women to thank all of our technical crew in attendance here in Provo. On the delay to Vakapuna, fans see number one get it, and they immediately start with the foo chant. I like the way you did that, sir. Mm, try. Been a tough year for Vakapuna. Came out of camp with an injury, or rather was rehabbing from season ankle surgery. Broke a hand against Tulsa. That needed surgery. Bronco Mendenhall knows how valuable he can be and what a fan favorite he is. Third down and 10 for Hall and the Cougars. Hall steadies himself, puts it out there for Collie and on the money. Inside TCU territory, out of bounds at the 29. Well, Rafael Priest playing off and still can't close enough ground to get Austin Collie for making this ball. You watch, this well, it's a nice throw here. You'll see Max Hall sets his feet well, lets it go, puts enough air under it for Collie to get to it. More importantly, how is Collie behind Rafael Priest on a third and 10? How does that happen? A good question. Robert and I doesn't want to ask it though. 29 yards on the completion. Cody Moore was the big man right in Hall's face there. Undaunted. The Cougars are again in business at the TCU 30. Austin Collie's numbers continue to grow. Vakapuna tripped up there on the outside. Bonner making a lot of tackles tonight. Playing well from his from his safety spot. Coming up fast to stop the run. 
Pui Vakapuna just hasn't gotten himself going just yet. He, uh, you, you see what he's trying to do is get himself moving. He's got pressure from the backside. Gets that pressure from the backside, but that is what determines who he has to keep running forward right in the hands of Bonner. Bonner scanning that offensive set. Second down and 10. Collie wrapped up there. Tory Stewart made sure he wasn't going very far. Phillips was there to help as well. And Austin Colley came back from his church mission, which was in Argentina. Pretty much what he said, the, the, most, the most athletic thing he had to do was run after a guy who stole his camera. <laughs> well, he, he's got some speed, I'll tell you. He's able to do it. He's Take, got his legs back. Look at how slow BYU is getting to the line, making their play count. They're just... Slowly eating clock. Time evaporating. 3.52 away from our first half's intermissions activities. Pitch and catch again for Hall. As this time he teams up with Michael Reed, the junior. Another Baytown, Texas product. The fans are pleased with what they have seen so far. Max Hall spreading the ball around to I seven want you to watch. Receivers. I want you to watch this right guard. This is called a snatch. This is as good as it gets. This is high level. Grab his shoulder pads and yank him down. We just lost it right there. You can see him on the ground. Absolutely dominating up front in pass protection on that play. Great job by the right guard, Travis Bright. Just snatching him down to the ground and beating him up. That's how you're going to defense tired. Well, that's befitting of the strongest player on the team, Travis Bright. 6'5", about 320. An academic All Mountain West Conference performer. As Robert and I says about him, ooh, strong. Some kind of strong. The offensive line protecting this man, Max Hall, building a nice cocoon around him. His Hall is already over 200 yards in this first half. He's had three games of better than 350 this season. Over the middle. Touchdown. And a flag. Hall has been laser locked on Pitta. And Pitta hits the pay dirt, but there is a flag down. They've called holding. We're going to find out the number of the alleged holder. Holding. Offense, number 67, 10 yard penalty, replay second down. They got one of the big guys, that's all we'll say. You don't <laughs> have to give a name. You don't want me to say the name? Uh, you, why, you, we, you didn't, well, you know, I'll say nice things about the guys so I can say their names when they hold. It's the center who doesn't make a lot of mistakes. That's uh, Aulai. The camera never lies. Well, you take a look at the center. You're the one snap in the ball, so he's easy to find. See what they call and why. Well, they got the wrong number, I'll tell you that much, because he didn't hit anybody, didn't touch anybody. going to say the same thing. Second and 19 for Hall. Back to the air. Collie's all alone and just off of his right hand. Austin Collie has had a field day in this first half having no troubles running free. You know, the thing about their wide receivers, think about all the guys on their squad that, that go out in pattern. They run very tight routes, and what's that mean? Well, their hips are low, their brakes are low, so it's hard to cover them. They're precise, and therefore a guy that runs a 4-6 actually runs patterns like he's a 4-4, because he runs them perfectly. It helps. Brutally effective on third down conversions. BYU, BYU has been. Underneath, this one is caught by Tonga. He gets the ball to the 15. Hodge with a stop. And this is going to be a field goal attempt for BYU. And if there's such a thing as a moral victory in this game right now, that's one for TCU. Holding this offense to a field goal. But you also let them hold the ball a long time. Should be a 33-yard attempt for Mitch Payne. 
Matt Allen is back holding now for the Cougars. Didn't do that early in the season when we first saw this team. He had a finger injury. Pain is perfect. And BYU's advantage grows to 11. We'll have you back for the conclusion of the opening half on versus from Provo. Plenty to smile about, plenty to cheer about so far for BYU Cougar faithful in Provo. They've got the advantage over their guests from Fort Worth, Texas. The Cougars leading the Horned Frogs 17-6 with 1.47 to go in the first half. Stay with us at the half. Glenn and I are going to be recapping the first six, seven telecasts of our Mountain West coverage on versus some of the season's best moments. Some of the big plays. And there is a big playmaker who's hoping to get his mitts on this one. Aaron Brown waits. The talented tailback takes it from the five. Brown with lightning speed and doesn't serve him well there. As we check in field level, Tim Neverett has an injury update. Well, you see the defense coming back out on the field for BYU. They are missing senior linebacker Markel Staffieri. Went out with the ankle injury. They worked on his right ankle on the sideline. Gave him some crutches so he could get off the sideline and into the locker room. He is being x-rayed at this moment. They are going to evaluate his status and, and let us know whether or not he'll be back in the second half. He did appear to be in quite a bit of pain, guys, on the sideline. Obviously a point of concern for BYU. Next up for them, they have to go to Laramie on the 17th. BYU has won its last nine road conference games. Here at home, they are stifling Urban Dickerson, Andy Dalton, and the Horn Frogs. Well, the, it's about speed on defense, and they know that Andy Dalton's not going to do a lot. They, they, they've watched what he did against New Mexico and why they won, because they didn't put a lot on his plate. Well, if they can take away a few of the options he has, they make him have to make more decisions and make him more inconsistent. As BYU has walloped TCU through the air in this first half. Dalton to throw. Has his man wide open there, Walter Bryant, as he's pinched along the sidelines. A first down pickup, a gain of 11. Time's a waste in, in the opening half of play. BYU. 11 points up on Gary Patterson's charges. Well, what Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator for TCU, knows now. Try to get some yards. Don't do anything stupid. We get the ball again coming out in the second half. So we try to make, if you can't make it two possessions, make it one long one. Five wides to throw to, and completing again to Dickerson is Andy Dalton. Coaches were saying they didn't want to go with a lot of those empty backfields because that would tend to put a lot on Dalton's shoulders. But credit them, they came right out, did it three or four times early in the game to put the thought in the mind of Bronco Mendenhall that they're going to go empty sometimes. 16 more yards through the air as the Horn Frogs try to get themselves into scoring position late in the half. It worked once, stay with the five wide again. Now Dalton will run it into BYU territory. First down pickup all the way to the 40. Very efficient so far on this drive, moving the ball quickly, getting some chunks of yardage. And now there's 49 seconds left, and they're in a position to get themselves maybe a few points out of this. Hodgkiss, one number 14, taking down the other. Corby Hodgkiss recruited by TCU out of Irving, Texas. He and Darrell Washington were high school teammates. Dalton finding the man there on a little wheel route for Donald Massey. Timeout is called for. Timeout. TCU, first charge timeout of the half. Snappy looking drive for Dalton and yep. his gang. No this pun intended. 30 second timeout. 17 6 BYU. Sports World's gotten a wake up call. Five time Emmy winner Dennis Miller back on Versus every week. He takes an uncommon look at everything sports. Nothing's off limits. Sports unfiltered with Dennis Miller. Tuesday, 10.30 Eastern, only on Versus. Plus, do you have something to say? You too can be a guest on the show, sort of. Got a question? Dennis wants to give you the answer. Find out more at Versus.com slash Ask Dennis. This is a big Mountain West Conference clash on Versus tonight. Here's the way the standings play out as of now. Well, when you look at it, why TC wants to play the spoiler, obviously it's get themselves bowl eligible at six and four but boy air force and 
Utah would sure love to see BYU take a hit because that keeps them right in the thick of things. Big game coming up in Salt Lake City this weekend. Wyoming and Utah. Dalton scrambling away from pressure. And then lost his footing as he reached the 30. But he got the first down. He sure did. Which will stop the clock. Allow him to get their play call in. That uh, Wyoming and Utah matchup, the Utes have won the last three times they've gotten together at Rice Eccles Stadium. Some classic clashes between those two teams. Both of these squads hoping to earn their way into bowl games at season's end. Dalton over the middle. Bang, right on target there to Jeremy Curley, the only true freshman to play on offense for the Horned Frogs this season. <laughs> Well, you take a look, Andy Dalton, what's his decision-making process? Looks back, looks right over the middle, understands there's a weakness in the zone there because of the way BYU's playing, and that's why he's able to know right away, one read, make it. I see empty. I know I've got an empty spot there. He throws into the void. There's his man, Curly, and it's good for that big yardage, big chunk of yardage that he wanted. And, Glenn, this is not good news. This is another of BYU's talented linebackers down on the turf. David Nixon slow to get back up. They took a helmet on that tackle right in the solar plexus. Could be as simple as being wind knocked out of them. We'll see what they come up with. Last year, the injury concerns for Nixon, mostly a groin muscle problem. Had a sack last week, made seven solo tackles last week. Well, you can see here, he takes a helmet shoulder pad square in the solar plexus and he grabs his stomach right where it's hit. Get another look at it right here, boom. That is a, that, that'll knock you out of breath real quick. Makes it hard to breathe, makes you panic a little bit. That was great camera work, guys. Just a few moments after Staffieri went to the dressing room for the Cougars ahead of time. Nixon will shake it off, make his wobbly way to the sideline. This has been a very sharp drive for TCU. Cougar fans, full throat now at LaBelle Edwards Stadium. Dalton has hit his last five passes. This one's incomplete, but there's a flag down as he was looking for Derek Moore. Yeah, Corby Hotchkiss got a little, a little too much of him, as they say. Now, it might have been a good job of acting, but it was also a bad job. Corby's got to, got to break himself free from that. Signal made by referee Dan Romeo with just 11 seconds to play in this opening half. Pass interference, defense, number 14. That'll be a spot foul, automatic first down. Well, it's one of those ones that happens in a big crowd out there. And, and, and once the ball's in the air, of course, the officials are already looking there and able to spot it. It was a good job by the officials of seeing that in there. And, and, and you know, it, so many times we talk about what did I was just say about an interference. BYU. And how hard, I don't understand all the time. I understand that one because I could see it so well, but then I don't understand some others that I look at and go, well, what's that? What's that? Bronco Mendenhall asking for timeout. You saw fans in the stands making that deflected gesture. Bronco to the official saying, was that ball tipped? If it was, it wouldn't have been an interference call. You're absolutely right. The officials, though, turn a deaf ear to that and see that's what coach Mendenhall is saying that was deflected 11 seconds to go in the half we send you to the sidelines and Tim never well linebacker Sean Dolman's gone to the locker room early he's got a, a contusion in his left right thigh rather they're going in to just stretch him out a little bit and as far as Nixon is concerned he just had the wind knocked out of him they say he's okay he'll be back Tim we appreciate the update Linebackers are starting to BYU drop like flies over there. Challenging the ruling on the field that the ball was tipped before the pass interference. The ball was tipped at or behind the line of scrimmage. As you can hear from the officials, there has been a challenge made. Well, if the ball is tipped, obviously, at or behind the line of scrimmage can't be pass interference. And we will uh, find out from these officials that they take a look and see what they can figure it out. From the uh, tail end of the play, the fans were begging the officials to rethink their 
decision. Well, that's a, that's a great view right there. You know, you can already you got the big man jumping up right in the middle. Looks like his hands might have gotten on it. And that Ethan was Manu Maliuna. That's exactly who it was. You're right, sir. I wanted you to say it, though, because I'm not good at saying those long names. Too many syllables for me. It's a BYU team that was shackled with injuries coming out of camp and had to force Manu Maliuna into the lineup. He's played very well. Does he tip that ball? It sure looks like it. It looks like his, his right forearm just touches the ball as it crosses the line of scrimmage. And there you see the flag in the picture as we are under review, under 30 seconds to go in the half of a game that has been controlled by the hometown team here in Provo, BYU, with uh, another prolific passing performance. They have the advantage by 17 to six, but TCU is driving late in the half. Now remember, of course, there has to be, we could see it and we guessed at it that it looked like it was, that's what it was, but it has to be definitive proof for them to look at it and say, we are going to overturn this call. Obviously the call on the field was inter pass interference. As the officials continue to confer with the video review judge, we well, give you another point of view. That one is very tough to tell. That, now after this one, we're gonna give you the best look. Look at number 55, his right forearm. Sure looks like it, but very tough to tell. I don't think it's definitive enough. But I'll, it'll wow, be interesting really? to think what they I, said. I think he grazed it, and I think you see the trajectory of the ball change. The hard part it is starts to waffle on. He, the hard part is his ball's been waffling like mm, that all night. Okay. So tough to okay. tough to say that's what did it. Obviously, with just 11 seconds to go in the opening half, and TCU deep in BYU territory, the Fair. Cougars challenge this call to force. TCU and to have a, a greater f amount of field to cover. And in their efforts to try and trim into this lead. Well, I wouldn't want to be the official having to make this call because it is a tough one. After review. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. There's video evidence that the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage by the defense. By rule, we cannot have pass interference. The result of the play is an incompleted pass. Ball be placed at the 15 yard line, second down. So we'll take one more look at it and you see, as you say, the tra trajectory does change or BYU makes it waffle. Will not be charged a second timeout. It's enough for them to go on. They say that's what it is, so. But now there could have been holding instead of interference. So many layers you are trying you to know, peel back. It's well, that's the point. They called interference. Yes. Maybe they would have called holding had it been tipped. So you see the timeout story left. Eleven seconds left in the half. This is second and ten for TCU. The ball resting at the BYU 15. Andy Dalton to throw to the corner. Nobody home. Well, you got to give your guy a chance. And that, and that ball, I understand why you throw that, because early in the year, you threw a pick in a similar situation. But you have to give your guy some sort of chance to make the grab. Chris Manfredini trots on off the sideline for Coach Gary Patterson. Practically 85% successful on his field goal attempts. As a member of the Horn Frogs. Now remember, if you're TCU, you don't mind this field goal because you know you get the ball coming out in the third quarter. And for Dini, made three last week. This would be his third of the half tonight. Whistles. None of that counts. Before the ball was snapped, timeout, BYU. It's the old second last time second out. timeout right before the kick. Sure, you've got the timeouts. Use them. That's what this game's this all about. A 30 second timeout. A little chess, chess match, a little gamesmanship going on. Coming up at the half, Glenn and I review some of the top plays from 
Mountain West Conference football action on versus a Big 12 preview matchup, previewing K-State and Nebraska this weekend. All the stats and highlights from this one coming your way in a matter of moments. Gary Patterson's team in the conference at two and three, wins over Colorado State, New Mexico, losses to Air Force, Wyoming, and Utah. And Gary Patterson will tell you those losses to Air Force and Wyoming could have been oh so different if the football bounced the right way and if there were some better decisions made. Painful year so far for Gary Patterson in those very uh, moments you're talking about. Balls bouncing off of the goal post. The decision to throw the ball. They had to be rejuvenated last week, though, but the way they thrashed BYU. New Mexico. Third and final charge time out of the half. Bronco Mendenhall's really going to make Manfredini wait. And the kicker's got a smile this on his a face. 30 second charge timeout. 17 6. As far as BYU's concerned in the conference, pristine at 4 0. They've beaten Air Force, they've beaten New Mexico, they took down UNLV. Last week they got Colorado State. They have the top spot. They have the conference win streak on the line of 12 straight. Gary Patterson's team wants to bring all that down to an end tonight. Well, I think Gary Patterson likes his defense and what it can get done. I think he's concerned about his offense, concerned about a young quarterback, concerned about the decision making. So he's hoping that they can keep close with some field goals and, and, and make it a game in the final few minutes. And, and that's what they're trying to do. So pleased with the defense last week. They said they played up to their potential finally. Special teams trying to get them closer to BYU right here. Manfredini has lined up three times. They let him kick it from 32 right now. And that is straight down the middle it with is, a little tail. Is, and in the end, it just kept everybody from getting their popcorn a little longer. All it did. Manfredini with his third successful field goal of the half makes it 17-9. Mountain West Conference football tonight on versus what's to come on the college football schedule with a Big 12 matchup Saturday. Well, that Kansas State Nebraska game, obviously uh, Kansas State with that defense, Utah BYU, what a huge game, huh? And then big game. That's the big game, Cal and Stanford. BYU had to be thrilled when they looked at the schedule this year and considered TCU and Utah, arch rivals, and both of those games being played here, they were going to have home field for both of them in November. Now, TCU has not had the season that many expected them to have, yet still, BYU is so tough to beat in this ball. Maybe the best team in the, in the country to beat at home. BYU with their home field advantage. A fanatic following, altitude, and attitude. This ball is skimmed on the turf to Austin Collie. Collie will not break the tackle. As that should do it for the first half. Austin Collie was one busy boy. On the receiving end of Max Hall's rifles, BYU has the advantage over TCU at the halftime break, 17 to nine. Well, BYU took advantage of some first off good field position to start the game. And then a, just a couple of mistakes by TCU a little later, got him that second score. TCU on the other hand, has had pretty decent field position, but you can see the youth and the quarterback coming through and their inability to put the ball in the end zone. The Horn Frogs trying to stop BYU's five game win streak. This BYU team has won 16 of its last 18. It's head coach Franco Mendenhall. He's standing by with Tim Never. All right, thanks, Joe. You're going to make him work for that field goal, weren't you? Every point's going to matter in this game. It's a conference game. I have a lot of respect for TCU and the way they play football, so we're going to challenge every point we can. Speaking of challenging, how about challenging that play? It kept a possible touchdown off the board. It's uh, it's one of the things about the rules that's good. If you happen to guess right, what our player said he tipped it, I believed him, and he was right. Bronco, thank you. Thanks. Gentlemen, we appreciate it. We are at the half with college football on versus here in Provo. The Cougars, very effective, trying to take down TCU. The Horn Frogs with that defense. Andy Dalton trying to lead the O, but it's the men in blue and white who have the advantage. Max Hall and Joe Semenoff teaming up, and the reaction's all positive.
playing BYU scored on its opening drive and has not looked back. They are on top 17-9 at the halftime break on versus. Joe Beninati, Glenn Parker with you from here in Provo. Glenn, the difference in the score is eight points. What's the difference in the game? Two big plays, one big return for BYU, and then a big pass play to Austin Colley. Other than that, this is a very evenly matched game. To the first half highlights we go. Max Hall was a busy man in that first half. Well, he was, but he made things out of nothing. You understand, he understands where to tuck it and go. Understood how to get that first down and keep the drive alive. That's what's most important to him. He has such a weapon in the backfield named Harvey Unger. Yeah, Harvey Unger showed a little speed here and showed some of the things that people weren't aware of. But then Andy Dalton, on the other hand, Rather than tuck it and run, he understood they have to design runs for him. He's having his best rushing night of the season. Chris Manfredini, as usual, is deadly accurate field goal kicking. Three field goals for him. Joe Semenoff out of the backfield puts him up 14 to 6 at that point. But then, hey, how about great defensive play, Brian Bronner? This gets them back into the game. They're down at this point 17 to 6, and they set themselves up for a drive before half. The Horn Frogs thought they were in business here. They got a pass interference call, but the ball was ruled deflected and the call overturned. Yeah, but Manfredini comes back with that third field goal, 17 to 6. They're right in the thick of things. 17 to 9 at the moment after 30 minutes of play. We'll get you back for the second half from Lavelle Edwards Stadium in a moment. Two quarterbacks getting ready to get back in business for the start of the second half soon to come. BYU on top 17-9 before the third quarter begins. Here's Tim Neverett with Gary Patterson. Coach, what'd you tell these guys in the locker room? It's still a one-score game at this point. Well, both teams are having trouble standing up against the pass because it's a wet, it's a wet grass. Uh, we're having to play more press coverage than what we'd like. I told them that we have to go make plays. Offensively, we get down there, we gotta score touchdowns. We said that all week. And defense late, I mean, they haven't done anything. We said we weren't here. We just got to go make plays. We're not playing the ball in the air. We gave them the one big play where we jumped over. We just got to go play. We'll, we'll do what we're supposed to do. We'll have a chance for some interceptions, have a chance to win this game in the second half. Gary, thanks. Thank you. Gary and Tim, we appreciate it. And Glenn, as the temperatures crawl into the low 40s, the turf is getting a little greasy. Well, it was a little greasy to start with. And what, what happens is, and what, what Coach Patterson was saying, because it's greasy, you can't play off. Because you can't react and go, you'll slip. So you got to play more press coverage and stay right up in guys' grills. And so that's what he was talking about, and that's the difference in what they're trying to accomplish out there. Neither team doing a doing a great job, but more importantly, he sounded a little hoarse. I think might've, he might have been yelling a little bit at that halftime. His voice does take quite the beating. TCU, they won the uh, coin toss, they deferred. So Aaron Brown and the Horn Frogs will get it to start the third quarter. It'll be Brown from the four. Searching for a crease, and there again, you saw Brown start to lose his footing as there are two penalty flags down on the kick return. And this will certainly hurt field position if it goes against TCU, which odds are it does. Signal for holding. Quinn Gooch made the special teams tackle, a vital cog in BYU's defensive arrangement. He's a coach on the field. During the return, holding, return team, number four. Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So that'll put him in a hole, put him all the way back down to the 14. That's a long field for Andy Dalton and the gang to, to move out of. I just like saying that. Andy Dalton in the game. I knew you were going to use it. Uh, who doesn't? I mean, really, it's there. It's a softball for us. The redshirt freshman Andy Dalton, the first redshirt freshman to start a quarterback for the Horn Frogs in five years, and last name was Ty Gunn. The ground game, and good news for the Cougars, Markel Staffieri has returned after his first half injury. As far as the quarterbacks were concerned, compare and contrast. Well, completion of attempts, the big thing is the yardage. There's a lot of yards left on the field out there, but Andy Dalton making up for it with a little bit of rushing. That interception obviously led to three points. But overall, you'd have to say Max Hall looking a little more impressive in this game. TCU last week, they rushed for a season high 238 in their win over New Mexico. Sending Evan Frosch in motion. Dalton's protection breaks down, and he flings it to the sideline as Brian Keel was all over him. Well, there's that speed on that defense coming into play again. Andy Dalton is 
doesn't have a lot of reads out there. So if that first read's taken away, he doesn't quite know what to do with the ball again. We'll see what happens here with the protection. As time to begin with, the Jorgensen with a good under move. And Brian Keel there against the fullback does a good job of coming clean. There's time to start with, but after that, there's nowhere on the second level to go with the ball for Andy Dalton. Keel, the mechanical engineering major, his brothers Ed and Brandon both played here. Dalton slings this one, it's intercepted. Picking it off, it's Papinga on his way. Kelly Papinga deep inside TCU territory. The Cougars are jumping for joy. That's exactly what Gary Patterson talked about. Can't have too many decisions on Andy Dalton's plate. Put him back there, he makes a throw just like this. Puts their, their team in a hole. BYU's got the ball now in great scoring position, so what is he going to do? Take a look at what he does. Drops back, turns and fires. Never sees Papinga sitting underneath in the zone. He thinks he's got a clear open zone to the right. He looked the entire time that side, but that's not what's important. More important is he never saw underneath Papinga. First in goal for BYU. The Cougars have had an interception in their last eight ball games now. Max Hall out of the eye. The give, Warunga, and there's nobody in his way. Well, it's just using bigger guys, faster guys, and getting an edge, and you know, that quick change offense takes a lot of heart out of your defense who's been playing tough. They gotta get back on, and all of a sudden they're in goal line short yard situation before they have a chance to think. BYU does a good job of getting big fellas out in front of Harvey Unga. Couldn't write a better script to the start of the second half for BYU. The interception and the touchdown run. The extra point is just fine. And it is 24 to 9 for Bronco Mendenhall and his troops as the blue and white supporters are very, very pleased in Provo. Onga, his second touchdown on the night. That one's too easy. BYU leads 24 to 9 early in the third. Gary Patterson asks his quarterbacks to be managers and be accountable. Don't throw the interception. You take a look, Dalton, who just threw the interception. Marcus Jackson was taking snaps just a minute ago from Blake Schuter. Schluter, the starting center. So we'll see which one goes in. They got them both up there right now, so BYU doesn't know. Gary told us last night, if a safety gets beat, he comes out of the game. Why shouldn't a quarterback come out if he throws an INT? Makes sense, at least on the surface. This one curls out of bounds before it ever arrives in the hands of Aaron Brown. So TCU will get good field position should they choose. As Dalton wades back into the huddle. Out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. And Gary Patterson, true to his word, will sit Dalton down. And Jackson will take the wheel. Well, you know, he said what he said. Throw an interception. Make mistakes. Obviously, Dalton's not getting the job done. They've got nine points on some good field position that they've had. So give Marcus Jackson another try here. Out of the shotgun with two wideouts. They run the option. Jackson keeps across the 40 and then necktied by Staffieri as we share another word with Tim Nebert on the quarterbacks. Well, Jackson's the guy who came in for Ballard last year. Jeff Ballard went down in the first game. Jackson came in, started against Baylor, beat Baylor at Baylor last year. So he came in this year to camp thinking he was going to be the number one quarterback. Not so fast at Andy Dalton. So the problem that Gary Patterson has is a problem a lot of coaches would like to have. You have two number ones, and he's not afraid to switch them off. That game you were referring to, Tim, as a result, he was the Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Jackson was for his relief efforts. The Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Week this past week, Chad Hall of Air Force, who has astronomical numbers. Well, and he's finally getting some national love as he was written up in USA Today and kind of showing the, the country what the Mountain West Conference folks know all along and how good a ball player Chad Hall is. The only player in all the bowl subdivision to lead his team in rushing, receiving, and all purpose yardage. It's third and four for Marcus Jackson, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Jackson launches this one and nicely in between the layers of that defense for first down yardage into BYU territory. That's Derek Moore. 
Yeah, you take a look at the, what, the trajectory of this ball. He's got to get it up and over Kelly Papinga, the first level, and that's number 46 with the last interception, and get it in front of the second. Well, that's a good job of the wide receiver setting down in there. Great job of Marcus Jackson putting it where it has to be, and that's a great look right there. You can see just how hard, how hard that was to thread that ball in there. Glenn, it was a gain of 17. Offensive coordinator Mike Schultz just loves Jackson's attitude. Working as a reserve. Sprinting straight ahead this time. I'll tell you what I love. I want you to pay attention to after the, 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 the call is made in the huddle. Watch the offensive linemen sprint to the ball, put their hands down, quick snap and go. They've done it about three straight times now. Let's see if they continue that. That's to give the offense a chance so that the defense never really sets and doesn't have a chance to see what they, they're coming up against. West Virginia and Louisville in a shootout. Tennessee State gets a win. Another action. This college football Thursday, we've got you covered in the Mountain West Conference on versus. Jackson on second and short. Throws this one and connects for Eric Moore again, the senior out of Wisconsin. He got a little bit of an advantage on Papinga and picks up 19. Well, there's good protection first off. That's why this play works, but it works because Marcus Jackson isn't trying to do too much. He makes a read, looks at the defense, makes a read, decides where he's going with that ball. A week ago, Moore cashed in his third TD catch of his career. They start to ramp up the tempo. Brown taking it to the boundary. Knocked out of bounds, close to the 15. Now every time they've quick snapped, they've run the ball. Every time they've settled in, it's to pass so Marcus Jackson can look and see the defense. You know they're going to need to figure out a way to counter off of that now. Quinn Gooch remains on the turf and in agony, as you can hear. What a shame. Yes. Twisted, probably his knee. Take a look and see what we can see. See his right knee right there twisted. His, his cleats caught in the turf. His right knee twisted. He grabs it right away. And obviously you can hear excruciating pain. The senior hails from Tucson, Arizona. Coming to this season, they were hailing him as a potential All-American candidate. Gooch stays down. We'll step away. More in the third in a moment on Versus. Medical staff on the sidelines for BYU tending to Quinn Gooch. A right leg injury that we would presume to be a knee problem. And Gooch obviously poured out his emotions on the field. And he is fearful of what that may be. As TCU has moved deep into BYU territory under Marcus Jackson's direction, and then Jackson gets yanked to the turf. Papinka in a celebratory mood. Well, that'll be their second sack, both of them on Jackson. Jackson looking to run after he, he, he steps, he sees a read. Now he knows he's got to go, so he takes off. But unfortunately, they're, they're doing a good job. They understand who's a quarterback now, so they're going for contain. Ryan Keel there gets contained up the field. Papinga comes underneath for the tackle. Third down and 13, Glenn. Not good so far for TCU in that department. Jackson will run. Carving his way inside the 10. Lowers his shoulder to the 5. The ball bounces free into the end zone. It's a wild scramble. And they are saying touchback. It's Cougar ball. Heartbreaking for Gary Patterson. He's saying the ball is down. Gary Patterson signaling on the sideline saying that. No, he was down. He was down. We'll take a look and see what happens. Kellen Fowler, the man who fills in for the injured Quinn Gooch. Now this is designed to quarterback draw. You see the they offensive line that's set and get going. It's a fumble. Ball was fumbled into the end zone, where it was recovered by BYU for a touchback. Ball be placed at the 20-yard line, first down. Well, we'll have to see whether his knee was down or not. It's tough to tell. The previous play is under review. Sorry. I apologize. So for the second time this evening, the review judges here in Provo, Utah, will be activated 
late in the first half. They overturned a pass interference call because the ball was deflected. Let's see if Jackson puts this one on the ground. You can't see there whether the ball was out or not. Now he took a pretty good shot. He came up, hold his head. We'll take a look here. Tough to tell there. I think our best view was the very first view we saw was to see whether the knee was down and the ball came out. So this is going to be a tough call. Is there enough to turn around? They would have to see definitive proof that his knee was down and the ball was still in his hands. We'll get a look right here. Take a look at one of his knees and see if the knee goes down before the ball comes out. He might be down. It's tough to tell right there, but. That left knee was the first point down. Sure, I think that first view we saw was the best. I think that it slowed down. You'd really have to look at it. The officials ruled that a fumble and a touchback in the end zone. The junior, Kellen Fowler, just off the bench, recovered the fumble in that scramble in the end zone. All of it is under review. We talked about the deflected pass, how tough that was for the officials. This one, just as tough a call. Either way, they're not really wrong. Coming in the early stages of the third quarter, BYU went to the half on top 17-9. A quick Kelly Papinga INT led to a Harvey Unga run. And now this with TCU looking to respond. Mm. The more you see it, you tend to believe anything, right? Yeah, you can talk yourself into something, can't you? Well, the official has a call. He's running in. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The runner was down at the five yard line prior to fumbling the football. It'll be first and goal at the five yard line. Well, you could see Gary Patterson pumping his fist. Well, as we said, I don't think the officials could be wrong. Either call they made would have been correct based on what we were able to see. So sophomore quarterback Marcus Jackson, who's come into the lineup to battle against Bronco Mendenhall's defense after Andy Dalton threw that third quarter pick to Papinga. Jackson has moved them smartly down to the BYU five. Visiting TCU from Fort Worth, Texas in the white. Jackson barking out the signals out of the shotgun. Rides Joseph Turner off right tackle and then Turner was straightened up as he approached the goal line. Well, not a bad, you get four yards on a first and goal from the five. That showed how strong Joseph Turner is with the ball in his hand. Former high school district champion in the 100 and 200 meter dashes. He's a sophomore from Austin, Texas. And as Glenn has mentioned, a career best 115 rushing last week in his first career start. Gary Patterson says when he's in there, we've played our best. Out of the power backfield, they're running off the corner there, diving to the end zone, Marcus Brock. Touchdown. And a huge lead block by Joseph Turner, an explosive lead block. They got up to the ball very quickly, put their hands down, snapped the ball before the BYU defense could settle in. The Horn Frogs love running this play along the goal line. We saw them do it, something very similar to it, against Utah on versus a couple Thursdays back. Now TCU is going to go for two here to close this to within a touchdown. Try to get it within seven points. Aaron Brown's in there. Walter Bryant comes off the sideline. Irvin Dickerson, 21 in the white. The two-point conversion. TCU has closed the margin to 24-15. Brown comes in motion. Option. Jackson holds on to it and then gets chased down from the weak side. Keel with all that speed. I don't understand the use of the option. It's worked one time and about 10 times they've run it. There's too much speed for BYU. Back to the touchdown and watching Brock turn this little end around along the goal line. Take a look at number 24, Joseph Turner. He's going to be the lead blocker. Watch the block that number 24 gets right here. He'll take two out just explosive to give enough bubble so that you can get in the end zone. That's a great job by Joseph Turner. 10 plays, just over 60 yards in the process. It took less than four minutes. 
and TCU is within nine. Marcus Jackson on in relief, leading his Horn Frogs to the end zone. TCU coming in with a mark overall of five and four. They're two and three in the conference. They're trying to wreck BYU's perfect Mountain West season. The Cougars are 4-0. Oh, they've won 12 straight. In fact, the last three years, the Mountain West Conference champion has run the table in conference play. Well, it, it shows, obviously, how good the programs BYU, Utah, TCU are that they could put together seasons like that. But it also shows you, when you look through the rest of the conference, how much they everybody beats each other up throughout the conference, other than maybe one team that can get through. Conference is lined up for four different bowl appearances in the near future as Colley takes off from inside the 15. Austin Colley diving across to the 26. 24-15, BYU has the lead. Once again, our Aflac home versus away trivia challenge. These two teams combined for 12 TDs here in 05. Which individual player scored four times in that game? Watkins, Brown, or Rogers? Grab your cell phone, text one, two, or three to 837-787. All correct answers during each of the telecasts are entered to win a plasma television. Once again, text one, two, or three. The answer you think is correct to 837-787. Max Hall starts him out of the eye, Harvey Unga, as he was tripped up by the shoelaces. Well, what do we see out of BYU? They come two tight end set now. Run the ball with Harvey Unga. You know what they're trying to do? They want to speed this up. They're, they don't want any more of this. Marcus Jackson throwing the ball around. They want to speed this up, get this clock ticking, and say, we've got a nine-point lead. See if you can catch us. Unga has set the BYU freshman rushing record this season already. Bronco Mendenhall says he's been tremendously humble. They do their best to keep him grounded. He has such incredible potential as it's Unga again darting away from tacklers. And then finally tracked by Hawthorne, who leads this team in tackles. Well, you know, right there you can see defense coordinator Dick Bumpus of TCU. And he's a storyteller. And you always love talking with him, but one thing he talks about is in the times that we've talked in the past is size and strength and what do you do when all of a sudden you're faced with big guys who want to come straight at you when you're a fast, small defense. Well, that's what they're faced with right now with the things that BYU is doing and running the ball at them. The Cougars' offensive line is... Huge. Five in the rush here. Hall feels the pressure, throws it underneath to the tight end. Bonner makes a nice tackle on Andrew George. But they move those chains and they eat that clock. And that's what Robert and I is wanting to do. And it was a great job of Max Hall holding up under pressure. Guys coming at him and still finding that tight end a little drag route and getting the ball to him. I know the answer to this question. When you did do. you take up football? I took up football when I was 20 years old in junior college. Max Hall didn't do it until he was in the sixth grade. He was a baseball pitcher. Sixth grade, that's 11. Mm -hmm. That's young. It's young. 24, 15 on the big board. Unga, a steady diet of the power back. David Roach, one of the last men. Off the pile there, a new career high in tackles for him this fall. Well, now you, now you get into an offensive coordinator's head. Last time they went Unga, Unga, and then a pass. This time they've hit you on first down with Unga. Now you wonder, are they setting up play action? Are they, they've got Manasseh Tonga in there now at the fullback, or at the running back spot. Well, they're not going to play action, obviously. They're in two-point stances. They're throwing the ball. Out of the shotgun. On second and six, Hall with good protection on the mark there for Pitta as he's wrestled to the earth. Darrell Washington wouldn't let him go. And Pitta has been Mr. Reliable. Impressed with Max Hall's arm here. You'll see this. This isn't an easy throw. It's a little whip route by, by Pitta there. That's called a whip route. What he does, he comes up. And he'll dip in and go back out. Great throw by Max Hall. It's very tough to cover if you're a linebacker because you're expecting once he dips in, you've got leverage. 
And now you've got to regain your balance and get back out to him too late. He's Glenn Parker. I'm Joe Beninati. Tim Nebert on the sideline as BYU continues to mount a drive. It's another of the tight ends. Vic Sooto, he lost the football. And it's TCU's. It squirts loose and the Horned Frogs are definitely in business now. And a previously fairly clean game is turning a little trashy on us, which is not unusual for Thursday night games. Teams are a little tired. They haven't had as much practice time and sloppiness tends to creep in. These two teams on the season are both in the negative department when it comes to the turnover story. Well, we take a look. That's a, a real good hit by Brian Bonner. Forces the ball out of Soto's hands. So Oto's hands, excuse me, I got to. Marcus Jackson continues to be deadly accurate. Another completion to Irvin Dickerson. Jackson is five for five on the night. What I like about Jackson on that play is how fast he made his decision, got his shoulders squared and turned around and threw that ball. Don't mess around. Don't give the speed of BYU's defense a chance to react and get into the passing lanes. Remember the last time the Horned Frogs were here, they rallied from a 34-16 deficit in the third quarter to ultimately win that game in overtime, 51-50. Jackson with all day to throw over the middle, incomplete. The pass was intended for Marcus Brock. Well, Marcus Brock collided with Corby Hotchkiss out there right at midfield. Officials assumed that there was no intent in the collision, so the no flag was thrown. But without that collision, you've got, well, here you get a great look at it. There's actually, that's probably a legal contact on Corby Hodgkiss, hitting him after the bump roll. And Marcus Brock rightfully wanted the flag because that threw off all the timing of Marcus Jackson's throw. Great camera work there. Brings up a second and 10. Jackson fumbled the snap. Regained his composure, and now he'll use his legs as he gets tripped up on the outside. Making the tackle was Chris Bolden as we visit with Tim Nebert for an injury update. Well, the medical staff on the BYU sideline has been busy, guys. Ian Doolin, defensive lineman, being taped up right now, trying to put a brace on his sprained right knee. They're going to see if they can get him back in the game. Quinn Gooch, in the meantime, the defensive back is done for the night. A right knee injury that's as specific as they would be. They will evaluate him after the game, but he is done for the night. All righty, Tim, thanks. And that's what we presume with respect to Gooch. Doulon had a season-ending leg injury in practice in week six last year. Jackson flushed out. Running away from Keel now. Keel on the dead sprint, able to drag him down shy of the first down. And you want to see speed at the linebacking spot. Brian Keel is a linebacker, 231 pounds. Marcus Jackson's a quarterback and cannot outrun him. Take a look at the speed of Keel. He gets up off the ground, get, takes the angle, and will catch a smaller, faster man. That's first off, understanding the angles. Second, having the heart and wanting to get after it. Great job. That's why he is the leader of this defense. So much was he looking forward to his senior year. Derek Wash comes in to punt for TCU. Keel dedicated himself a whole lot more film study in the offseason and during the year. Wash angling this one for the corner. Puts a lot of air under it and it settles into the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for the Cougars from their own 20 as we continue with college football on versus BYU TCU. Little alphabet soup in a good one in Provo. The tide has turned a bit for TCU. BYU has turned it over twice. TCU just once. In the last three seasons, the Horn Frogs are 23 and 0 when even or ahead in the turnover story. As they attempt to reel in Bronco Mendenhall's BYU Cougars tonight in Provo with college football on versus. And wow, have the Horn Frogs erupted defensively. Tommy Blake all over the ball carrier. Well, what they've done is, you know, when you, that was a great job by Dick Bumpus understanding where the ball's gonna come and how to determine what you wanna do. Brian Bonner, <laughs> He attacks from the outside. So what does that mean for an offensive lineman? That means your end, Tommy Blake, is coming inside. They don't pick up the inside stunt. Blake is right there to stop the play. Loss of one, hauled to throw, and high over the head of Michael Reed. See how important first down is. Talked about it with TCU while we were in the break. They did nothing on first down. That's what stopped their drive. Here's BYU. They get stopped short for a 
yard loss on first down, now an incomplete. Now they're faced with a long third. Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, talking about Max Hall. Said he was in the same boat as Harvey Younga as the beginning of the year. So pleased with the way he has progressed. He's done a nice job of checking the routes, reading the coverages. Right now, he's got a third and 11 to look over. The Horn Frogs rush four. Hall throws it out in the flat, and it's off the hands of Unga. Well, we said game's turning a little sloppy right now. He had an interception and a fumble and a couple of drives and ending punts because of sloppy play all in this third quarter. C.J. Santiago, the junior punter. All Gary Patterson wanted last night in the meeting with us was, hey, can we see him? Can we see BYU punt a little bit? Well, he's got his wish. Bonner is back there deep. Look for Bonner to try to make something happen here. He's been good on returns. From the 41. Got the outside. Skipping his way on that little tightrope. Inside BYU territory. 24-15. If you're just tuning in, this is college football on Versus. We are inside a packed Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo, Utah, along with Tim Neverett and Glenn Parker. I'm Joe Beninati. Three cheers for all the men and women in our technical crew tonight, bringing you two of the very best in the Mountain West Conference, TCU and BYU. And for the moment, the Horned Frogs are starting to turn this game very much in their favor. Well, they certainly are forcing some turnovers, getting great field position now at the plus 40. Little quick hitch. Connecting with Walter Bryant, the junior out of San Angelo, Texas. Marcus Jackson has been one of the storylines here in the second half. Gary Patterson put his starter on the bench, Andy Dalton, after an early INT. And Jackson has rallied the troops. Less than four minutes to go in the third quarter. Second and seven. Cougar faithful starting to feel the intensity now as they ramp up their cheers. Joseph Turner's not going to get very much. They talk about your big third downs here if you're TCU with three minutes to go in this third quarter. You got a third and one and a half or so. He got third more than two. I thought. Third and two here. Uh, there, you can't talk about the emphasis enough on a play like this at this juncture in the game. Injured a foot against Texas, Joseph Turner did. Aggravated that injury on versus against Utah a couple weeks ago. And now on third and short, Jackson calls his own number and gets gobbled up at the 30. Well, I'll tell you what, you had a missed assignment somewhere on that offensive line because nowhere during a quarterback keeper like that should a D lineman be able to come free. Brett Denny, number 92, able to put a hat on the quarterback swiftly. Well, you're right. It's your right tackle right there, number 61. Gets himself beat a little bit. He doesn't take an inside step because he doesn't take an inside step. The inside gap is controlled by Brian Denny or Brett Denny, and that results in this fourth down. Aaron Brown got drilled. The first man to say hello is David Nixon, and that triggers a big celebration. Nixon and Papinga. The linebacking core with all sorts of speed against the speed back Brown. Well, credit a great defensive effort here. David Nixon knifing in, jumps over the cut block of the fullback to get right into the legs and stop that play. Great job by David Nixon. Understanding where the ball is going. This defense for BYU so stingy on its home field. Makes the big play right there, gets the ball back in Max Hall's hands. He'll work out of the eye. The play action, the deep ball for Austin Collie. Not able to run under it. Well, I'll tell you what, this is when you credit a defense. They get, a, they get changed. Ball's out on downs. You're, you're, you're feeling a little sorry for yourself because your offense didn't get it done. Take a look, Robert and I says, I think I'm gonna go deep here. We got a momentum on our side. 
and your defense is right where it's supposed to be. Dick Bumpus had his team playing the exact right defense in that situation. Change of downs, momentum shift, BYU's going for the juggler. I'm going to protect myself. Good job by Dick Bumpus and his crew. Hall was saying they've got to be on target with their routes, their reads, their protections against this TCU defense. That time, he fires right complete to uh, the wideout Michael Reed. Reed with a pickup of seven. It'll bring up a third and three. Well, with a little bit of wet conditions, the minute you see DB's playing off, you know you can get six or seven with a quick strike because the DB can't respond quick enough because he's going to slip if he does. Mountain West Conference action on versus with BYU holding a 24-15 advantage. The defense just gave them the football, turning TCU over on downs. Hall throws, Reed catches, and that's good for first down yardage. As we send you down to field level, Tim Nevert with more on the field conditions. Yeah, you guys are talking about it, and it has been slick. The dew has been on the field since before kickoff here with the declining temperatures. The field was covered with a tarp since yesterday afternoon. They lifted it this morning so that TCU could have a walkthrough, a game day walkthrough, which is unusual for them. The players for BYU also last week in the game against Colorado State complaining of a slippery field here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Tongue in cheek too, Tim, it was Gary Patterson said, you know what, they sometimes they let the field grow a little long when we come into town. Although he did say prior to this game when I was talking to him, they cut it nice today. Ah, he's happy. Happy with the groundskeeping. As Hall gets brought down. Cody Moore well, jogging the old, to the sideline after making the tackle. It's the old Oakland Raiders. They're facing the team. He let the grass grow and slows them down just a little bit. Drag their cleats a little bit. When you're playing a team like TCU with all that team speed, you want to get every split second of time you can get at them. Max Hall with another big day. West Virginia getting the better of Louisville tonight. College football around the nation. And uh, keeping away from one. And then gang tackle. Hawthorne and Roach were there to take the helmet off of him. No, he's not too pleased. Well, the fans aren't pleased either. They don't like to see their hero get a helmet ripped off, but I think the officials made a good good no call there. You got some emotions going. Everybody's grabbing. Every, it wasn't as if it was ripped off. It was being tackled off. Sometimes the officials have to be smarter than the crowd. And I think right there was one where they, they definitely were. Good point. Harvey's dad, Jackson, was a running back at BYU in the early 80s. Pop has got to be proud as Unga continues to churn out yardage. 49 all-purpose by our count. Third and five for the Cougars, nearing midfield. Whistles. As three quarters have gone complete. The final 15 second, uh, rather 15 minutes of regulation time are soon to come your way. Dick Bumpus's defense has been challenged. TCU, BYU. Rock for the Horn Frogs making it a whole lot interesting in this hard hitting affair with Harvey Unger in charge. Slice it up into thirds for you. And actually, the scoring summary has been a seesaw kind of affair. You score, I score. And for the moment, Bronco Mendenhall has the lead. BYU out in front, 24 to 15. The early third quarter touchdown jaunt from Harvey Unga after the Kelly Papinga INT has given the Cougars a little bit of cushion. They are trying to pad the lead now. They are faced with a third and five. BYU here at home in the dark blue. Max Hall steps up and has all day to run. Hall inside the 40. Run out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Well, Hall, Hall got that ball, looked out, saw press coverage, man, tight. Knew that there was nothing and knew that there was no safety middle of the field, so he tucks it and he's gone. Take a look right here. He steps, looks right to his left, nothing. Sees empty right in the middle and he's out of there. One read. It's taken care of, I'm gone. Great job of recognition by Max Hall. 19 yards he got there, Glenn. Max Hall, the nephew of Danny White, the former Dallas Cowboy quarterback. Danny's son, Reed, is on this BYU squad. 
head coach of the Utah Blaze in the Arena Football League right up here in Salt Lake City. First and ten and out of the gun. Hall throwing this one incomplete. That's a miscommunication. You know, we talk about how there's not many plays, but there's a lot of options. So quarterback saw one option, wide receiver saw another option. A little, not a miscommunication, but Dennis Pitta read that different than Max Hall read that. Pitta, the former walk-on, who has become a favorite for Max Hall. Staring at a second and 10, Hall's had another big day, almost 250 again through the air and he's run for better than 30 yards. With time, and incomplete, trying to hook up with a senior, Matt Allen. Well, now you bring up a third and 10 from the 34. How big is this third down for TCU to keep them outside of field goal range and extending that lead? More importantly, getting even more points on the board. So we'll see what Dick Bumpkins comes up with for his TCU defense. Wigwagging in those signals. Third and 10. Just getting started in the fourth quarter with college football on versus a heavyweight showdown in the Mountain West Conference, TCU and BYU. Hall steps up and fires a rocket that is tracked down. What a catch on the sideline by Matt Allen. Well, this is about understanding the footwork again. You see out there, you, you get a guy moving and watch the DB slip down. He's going to fall if it's, it'll be in the top right of your screen when you see this. DB slips and falls to the ground, doesn't, doesn't really see what's going on. He wouldn't have been there anyways, but a great job of Max Hall understanding he's got coverages off. On a third and ten, you got off coverage. You got to attack it, and they do a good job of getting up the field with it. Wonderful footwork there by Matt Allen. Unga looking for running room, and he gets lassoed to the turf. Hawthorne and Roach are always active. The safeties, Roach, Bonner, Hodge, they're the communicators in this TCU defense. The, the quarterbacks of the defense, because they play a 4-2-5, a, a and, and when you have three safeties, they have to be that, that quarterback back there to set everything in position. And as the Horn Frogs get ready defensively, this will be second down, call it nine. Tonga, knifing ahead, Manasa Tonga, down near the 10 yard line, very close to first down yardage. Bronco Mendenhall in the past has called him his most consistent performer. Well, this is exactly what Gary Patterson was afraid of with a lead. BYU started that drive on their own 32 back in the third quarter. Here we are in the fourth quarter. Time is still ticking away, and BYU still has the ball, is still running the ball, and hasn't ended this drive yet. Third and short. They need two. Hall on the fade, deflected away. Well done by Torrey Stewart. He interrupted Michael Reed there. Great job of Torrey Stewart getting his head around, getting his arm out into the, where the ball's coming, the trajectory where the ball's coming, and knocking that ball away. Top of your screen, you're gonna see Stewart watch it, get his head all the way around, get his arm up. That's a very good defensive play by a DB. Torrey Stewart's a senior. He's a Juco transfer, Glenn. They nabbed him from SEC country. He grew up in Mississippi. Field goal try of 29 yards. Mitch Payne, the freshman, gets himself settled. Kick on the way, and it's good. He pushed it a little, but it stayed within the uprights. 27 to 15 now for BYU as we continue with more in the fourth. BYU has won its last 10 ball games here by an average of 30 points. Not that easy tonight. BYU, TCU, 27-15 for the Cougars with college football on versus. As they uh, once again packed Lavelle Edwards Stadium to watch their beloved team. This community 
embraces this school's athletic program and its football program. Bronco Mendenhall says, you know what? Even though the fans will say that their love for the team is unconditional, it is conditional. As long as they keep winning and behaving well and playing well, they keep showing up in droves. Aaron Brown slashing across the 30. Brown's on his horse. Brown to midfield and finally forced out of bounds. That's the return TCU needed. Some incredible blocking. Great job of Aaron Brown understanding. Hit the hole, run to daylight. It's a simple proposition when it comes to returning kicks. But look at the wedge. He gets out in front. Now he looks behind Marcus Brock. There's one block. He's going to get a second block. Aaron Brown right there. That's that's understanding. I get. I follow my wedge, run to daylight. You can't say enough about Marcus Brock picking up a couple of big blocks right in front of Aaron Brown here. Good job. What was your time in the 100 meters? I never run 100 meters. Sorry, you, that's way too far. You big snuffle up against you. What was your time in the 100 meters? I want to know. Aaron Brown in high school, 10.45 in the 100. Some razzle dazzle here. Curly drives it inside the BYU 45. Staffieri was there to make the collar. You just called me a Sesame Street character, my friend. I did. Now you take a look here. Using the reverse to get a very quick defense out of their lanes. Take a look, get some lead blocks, and then who's there to make that play? Brian Keel's right there, but very successful first down. Get yourself eight yards. Curley, who's already completed a couple of passes this season, was the man looking to throw that after the reverse. Pretty good baseball player in his own right, too. TCU gets the first down, moving the chains, trying to reel in BYU on the road. Gary Patterson's team has been a little allergic to Thursday night games. They've had three of them this year. And he was saying you'd think if we had three, two of them could be at home. Uh-uh, two of them on the road. At Air Force and here in Provo. Dalton back in there, throwing the deep ball and just overleading. Donald Massey. And Donald Massey was open. He got a little bit of a hold. He made a great double move to get open. But Dalton, again, just no touch on the ball when it comes to that long ball. So Andy Dalton, who was lifted early in the third quarter when he threw the interception to Papinga. Marcus Jackson moved the team effectively, got them back within striking distance. But now that the lead has grown, Dalton's back in there. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Marcus Jackson was more effective throwing the ball than Dalton. But apparently this is the move Gary Patterson wants to make, and, and he's the head man. They loop the screen to Aaron Brown. Brown with a wonderful move. Brown got himself close to the 30-yard line. I'll tell you what, he should have been a loss of two on this, and because of his speed and his vision, gets himself a first down. Great job by Aaron Brown. And he gets some big fellas out there blocking for him. Don't forget that much, too. Take a look, Aaron Brown here with this move. Cuts back under, one spin. Not much you can say. The reason why he got that, he's got vision and he's got speed. The junior, Moses Fouquetti, was able to bring him down. Listen, the Horn Frogs will keep the ball on the ground. Joseph Turner halted by David Nixon. 11.30 to go, regulation. BYU in front by 12. They have won 12 unanswered in the Mountain West Conference. They went to Fort Worth last year, beat the Horn Frogs. Now they've got them on their turf. Second and seven. Dalton will throw. His receiver fell down, and that one goes incomplete. Tough break there for Irvin Dickerson. I mean, Dalton's lucky that's not going back for six, the way that ball was hung up there. We'll take a look. You'll see the, the receiver's going to just lose his footing. Dickerson tries to step, doesn't step. You know, you got to be very careful, very deliberate with your steps on this field. And he just lost his right foot there, slipped out from under him, and down he went. Dickerson, the senior, is working on his master's degree at TCU. Third down and seven, and it gets loud. Dalton incomplete as Jimmy Young pulled out of the route. And Dalton, somewhat perplexed, comes back towards the sideline. I think the, Jimmy Young made one move. He made another. They're not reading a, they're not running option routes out there, so one of them had to be wrong, huh? 
You'd have to uh, deduce that. I'm, that's me. I'm a deductive type thinker. Good reasoning by you. Yep. Five wide outs here on fourth and seven in the fourth quarter. Dalton sets his feet, fires. Oh. The ball and the defender got there at the same time against Aaron Brown, and they are going to say Ben Criddle timed it beautifully. Aaron Brown thinks he was interfered. This will go over to BYU on downs after this. Well, you take a look. We'll see what gets there first. He actually had Dickerson wide open. Looks like the left hand might have gotten there earlier, but it's pretty darn close. I think he just got to come up with the ball. Good defensive play. Criddle might have been there early, but more importantly, Dalton should have looked right over the center of the field and seen Irvin Dickerson running free and throwing the ball there, maybe for a touchdown. Ben Criddle loves to dance, Glenn, at the Vegas Bowl last year. He challenged one of the Oregon guys to a little dance off, dusted him off. He's got something to dance about right there. BYU gets the ball back, some miscommunication in the backfield, and Hall hits the turf. Jason Phillips surveying the situation. Well, you take a look, and the sloppy conditions are getting there as Unga slips before he can get to the transition point where he's supposed to mesh with the quarterback and hand that ball off. So sloppy field conditions. And it's not sloppy. It, it looks perfect, doesn't it? There's just enough moisture at the surface of the grass, and not, actually not on top of the grass, but just that top layer of dirt that makes it slick. I would imagine from a temperature standpoint in the low 40s, it's comfortable for these guys. The TCU players have been dealing with 80s and 90s during the season. Hall to Pitta as Pitta carves his way to the 35. Just shy of a first down on second and 15. That was a, a well-thrown ball, and Pitta quickly becoming the, the go-to guy for Max Hall this season. Pitta has, a, an, an, a, he understands route running, number one. You watch him, he's very crisp, his hips are right. Everything he does is right when it comes to running a route for Max Hall to see. The big shoes to fill, Johnny Harley, Pitta and George, and so Oto, the tight end trio doing that. Pitta, almost another 100-yard game receiving. Third down and short. Call it third and two. And flags hit the ground well, before the, the play began. One of the big fellows jumped a little bit, just moved a little Ball bit. start. Offense, number 64. Yeah. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's R.J. Willing. Right, we'll, we'll show you. It's not too tough right here. He's he just going just gonna to nudge himself a little. He just kind of, oops, oh, I wanted to go. He's got that fast little guy out there. He's a big guy. He just, you know. Oh, excuses, excuses. It's not excuses. It's truth. We're just big fat guys that aren't allowed to move. Sticking up for the brotherhood. Hall complete to Unga. And Unga gets uh, tracked there. Spun around and down by Brian Bonner. But he got the first down yardage. Papers at the beginning of the year were calling this guy speedy, powerful, graceful. Unga has lived up to that billing and then some. Oh, I thought you were introducing me for a moment. Well, you keep calling yourself a big fat guy. Come on now, go easy on yourself. I was hoping you would help me out, but Unga has been, every, <laughs> he's been everything the coaches could hope. He's been more, he, and when he, they just glow when they talk about it, Harvey Unga. First and 10 for the Cougar. It's Unga once more. And a host of tacklers are waiting for TCU. For those of you who played along with our Aflac Home and Away Trivia Challenge, time now to find out who had the most college football smarts. We asked you who scored four times on this field back in 2005, Watkins, Brown, or Rogers? And the correct answer was Corey Rogers. Four scores in that one. And you would figure those pulling for TCU would have the advantage. 62% of the TCU faithful got that one right. Rodgers scored in a variety of ways. On the ground, through the air, and I believe he had a 100-yard kickoff return in that game just the same. Manasa Tonga cut down in the open field. Bonner came up fast. He, Bonner's been all over the field tonight, doing a great job of closing distances and making plays. Fortunately, there's just so many weapons for BYU 
on their offense, they're just able to keep the chains moving constantly. Now second, here they are with another third down. Second team All Mountain West Conference performer a season ago, Brian Bonner. This TCU team trying to get to bowl eligibility. They have five wins. This conference is packed with parity, if you will. BYU has the unblemished record on top, and after that, everybody is tightly jumbled. Hall to throw, big blitz coming. He floats it into space, well timed there for the big tight end. The 6'5", Andrew George, pulled it down after he got loose from Stephen Coleman. He gains 12. Demoralizing for a defense. Third down and five, midfield, you bring the pressure, you bring the heat, you get into him, and he does a great job. Look at this, understanding the route that's being run, understanding where to put the football, and understanding touch. So we haven't seen so much out of the TCU quarterbacks. Max Hall has touched. That's why that ball right there is completed. On first and 10, Hall just wants to keep this drive going. Ooh, threw that one into traffic there, incomplete to Colley. Tim Neverett chimes in on the TCU D. Yeah, one of the things that Gary Patterson told us he wanted to do was to put enough pressure off the edges on Max Hall to force BYU to keep a back end to block and stop throwing to the running backs because when Harvey Younger catches the ball, uh, he, he's as deadly as he is when he's running the ball. That time there, they kept Tonga in the block, and it was an unsuccessful play. But for the most part, the backs and the tight ends have been giving TCU fits, and that was th something that Gary Patterson was certainly afraid of. These two teams, they both want to dictate, and I think that's after a while becomes just a measure of wills. Robert and I was talking about the willpower winning out in this game. Yeah, you know, who wants, and you're absolutely right, Robert and I came up and said, you know, we, we have what we want to do, they have what they want to do, and, and it's not a matter of, is this matchup going to be right, or is that matchup going to be right? It's can we get the ball to the people we want to the most, or can they deny us the most? It's not about one matchup, it's about all of it. And that's Tim talking about the, the chess match that's involved in all that, some of the things that make this sport of football so great. Third and four, Max Hall has another 300 yard passing game under his belt tonight. Trying to convert for the Cougars and run time off of TCU's comeback effort. The throw is too high, too tall for George. George is complaining, he thought he was interfered with. The officials are saying that was uncatchable. Well, whatever they're saying, that, you know, at that point they're saying the ball was uncatchable, but that's a rare third down that uh, TCU gets off the ball. Let's take a look here. That ball's thrown to an open spot. Well, it's hard to say that that's uncatchable. When if he'd had both hands, he might have grabbed that ball. The official was waving the hand over his head saying that was uncatchable. Santiago comes in to punt, and Bonner, if he could ever break one, now would be the time for those pulling for TCU tonight. 6.52 to go in regulation. BYU's lead is 12 points. The punts away. Do a good job of protecting Santiago. And Bonner Fair catches it inside the 10. A critical juncture of this game for sure for the Horn Frogs. The men in white have the football when you return on Versus. Still plenty of time in this fourth quarter. Six minutes and 44 seconds to be specific. BYU on its home turf, trying to win again in the Mountain West Conference showdown with TCU, leading 27 to 15. The Horn Frogs just took possession after a BYU punt. And Andy Dalton, the redshirt freshman out of Katy, Texas, has 94 yards in front of him. Coming out of Katy High School, he was a greater Houston area offensive player of the year. Drops back into his own end zone, comes underneath to more complete as he stretches that football close to the 14. The tackle was made by Papinka as he has been a hit machine tonight. Well, good play design. Everybody runs off, you run a drag underneath, and that gets you five or six yards quick, makes a manageable second and third down should you need it. They bumped it up by two, they gave him eight there, Glenn. Dalton skips away from pressure, lowers his head, and picks up the first down yardage. Guess who, Kapinga again, 
Put a helmet on him. I'll credit Andy Dalton there. When he took off running, he actually made David Nixon miss with a very nice move. Something Dick Nix, David Nixon doesn't do too often. Not easy to do that. You're right. Nixon, who has led this BYU team in tackles for loss in the past. Dalton goes to the gun with four wides to throw to. Comes underneath complete to Dickerson. Dickerson shaking loose and then actually loses yardage. Brian Keel, another gazelle in the linebacking core. See, this one just got to be smart. Now, you run the drag route under, and it's a great job by Dickerson. You run everybody off just like they did on first down the last time. They had themselves six or eight yards. But not smart enough at this point, Dickerson, to keep the yardage. Instead, what's he do? He runs backwards, costs himself a lot. Now it's a one-yard game instead of an eight-yard game. Second down and nine. Dalton with plenty of time. He'll keep it and get to the, to the 25. Nixon made sure he would go no further. This will bring up third and short for the Horn Frogs. See, sometimes your kids just have to understand what you're trying to accomplish rather than... And so many times a college kid thinks, hey, I'm just trying to get the yardage. I just want to score a touchdown. Well, you got to know what you're really trying to accomplish is get yourself manageable third, second and third down. TCU has struggled in third down conversions tonight. Dalton puts it out there complete. He got it to Donald Massey. Move the chains. That was a nice throw by Andy Dalton. Great job of Massey grabbing the ball. It's hard to explain how hard it is when a guy's got his hand in your face to make that grab, but this ball's on a rope. Massey feeling better. He had that bad shoulder about a month ago. This is a TCU team that had 16 days off prior to pounding New Mexico. They looked re-energized last week. Trying to play catch up against the Cougars. Dalton with all day to throw. Now he's flushed out. Flings it over the middle. It's deflected and it falls harmlessly to the turf. Corby Hotchkiss, the man recruited by TCU, made the defensive play there. This was a well a well-executed scramble drill. When you scramble, all your wide receivers have to stop and come back to you. Now, he has one right out there, and he's looking. He makes the right decision. Corby Hodges does a good job of getting his hands up in that passing lane, but I'll tell you, uh, you there's so many guys that have to do things right when you get in the scramble drill like that. they got to be in the right place. they got to do the right thing, and at that time, they were doing it. Just great defense. Injuries to Tafuna and Gabriel really opened the door for Hodgkiss as Dalton takes this one down again and sprints to another first down. Andy Dalton having a career-best rushing night. Well, he got a... See the lane, run to the lane for 15 yards. Well, that's a design quarterback draw. His center, Blake Schluter, out in front of him. Gives him a, a big block. The completion to Moore inside BYU territory, and the Horn Frogs have things rolling now. Dalton looking to the sidelines for advice in a play call. 4.24 to go in the fourth. Dalton, airborne, oh, what a grab on the sideline, a spectacular catch by Bart Johnson. Incredible. That's a highlight reel, isn't it? I mean, you'd like to say, here's what he did right. What he did right was just put it in the general direction of Barton. Great job, one hand, grab up that ball. Bart Johnson, phenomenal, right there. First and 10. Dalton over the middle, has some room there, swinging it on a line to Massey. Is this the same Andy Dalton we watched in the first three quarters? All of a sudden, the confidence is back. 27-15 and oodles of time left if you're a TCU fan. And if you look at Dalton's night. Looking in the end zone. Running away from Jorgensen. Slings it to the back. They are going to rule this a touchdown. Now, you know what, Bart Johnson, 
huge third, or huge catch with one hand and comes back scramble drill again he's running the baseline of the of the end zone understands there's a scramble drill on gets himself in position and comes up with a catch look at him on the baseline here let's see if he gets his feet in great job andy dalton know where his receivers are is under review that's a touchdown well the two officials looked at each other hemmed and hawed a bit and then one put up the arms touchdown, which is why I hesitated. And well, they, they are going to review. Yeah, they'll review it and they'll look at it many times, see how many angles they can get a look at and see if it comes up with it. From that last angle, we looked it looked like a touchdown to us. Tough to tell. Well, we'll get a look here. It looks like a touchdown to me. But I've I've been known to be wrong once, <laughs> one time. Now Bart Johnson's going to say he had that left foot down when he After review, made first contact. Ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Darn right. Bart Johnson, who had an absolutely brilliant play during the drive, converts the score, gives TCU six more, and Manfredini comes on looking for the extra point to make this a five-point game. It was a 94-yard drive led by Andy Dalton there. Hard to do it any better. Manfredini, who had three field goals in the first half, snaps this one right through. 27-22. We thought it would be a good one. It has not disappointed in Provo. College football on versus. Mountain West football on Versus is brought to you by Keystone Light. You can't always be smooth, but your beer should be. Things are shaping up to be a pretty dramatic finish in front of the Cougar faithful in Provo. Bart Johnson with a personal highlight reel on that last drive for TCU. A 94-yard drive in less than three minutes. And all of a sudden, it's 27-22. BYU thought they were... Breathing easy early in the fourth. Anything but that now. Well, you know, they, they, they've they been a couple of plays from blowing this thing wide open, and TCU's just held in, made plays defensively when they had to. Came up with a big offensive drive to cut this thing close, and now you're looking at a, a hands team situation out here. BYU. BYU wanted to see what TCU was going to set up for that kickoff. Drew Combs, the straight-on kicker. Originally a walk on at Arkansas and you could see that Drew has an arm that ends just below the elbow. He was born that way. He's the first straight on kicker at TCU since the mid 80s. Back a few weeks ago when we were in Fort Worth, it was Combs who put his left toe to that onside kick attempt that traveled what nine and three quarter yards. Yeah, it was it was as close as I've ever seen. And it was perfectly executed, except the ball was touched right before 10 yards. So the Cougars wanted to spy TCU's formation there, trying to sniff out whether or not they kick it short again. 349 left. Gary Patterson's team has valiantly fought its way back. College football continues this Saturday on versus a Big 12 matchup, K-State and Nebraska. Right now we are focused on a interesting finish in the Mountain West. It's Austin Colley from the three. Colley finds a seam and then lowers the shoulder and then he's ushered out of bounds by Donald Massey. 27-22. And now BYU is thinking about Ball security and a couple of first down. Yeah, you know, a four-minute offense here. We talked about it before. We've talked about it in the past. As an offense, this is exactly what you want to be as an offensive lineman. Under four, right about four minutes to go. Ball in your hands. Can you grind it out? Can you smash them down? Can you get three to five yards per clip and just eat clock and end this game with the ball in your hands? For this Mountain West television crew, it's our last get-together. Coming to you from Provo as Harvey Unga leapfrogs one defender, then gets stopped by Jason Phillips. 
On the 24th of November, BYU will entertain Utah. You can see that game on Versus. And haven't the Utes been marvelous? They've won five straight. They started out a little up and down, came on very strong. Wins against UCLA, wins against Louisville, wins against TCU. They have done a, a very good job of getting that, that, that team back in the running. Coming on with a vengeance. They've won five straight. They've won six of the last seven against Wyoming. That's who they face this weekend in Salt Lake City. Manasa Tonga takes that pass from Max Hall, who has authored another 300-plus yard passing game tonight. The thing that if you're Bronco Mendenhall right now you're upset about is Manasa Tonga didn't just drop to the ground. Instead, he kept trying to gain yards and went out of bounds to stop the clock at 255. And now you got a third and five. All the things you didn't want a guy to do, he did do you right there and then. Got to understand the overall picture in the game sometimes. Talked about it earlier with TCU and the, and the wide receivers. Talk about it right there with Manasa Tonga out of the backfield. And this is another example, too, for the quarterback, the young quarterback, Max Hall, the sophomore. Just another episode in his learning curve. How to finish off a tight game. The throw is low. It's deflected up in the air, and then it's caught. Follow the bouncing ball. Andrew George does, and he's inside TCU territory. Well, obviously, TCU is going to think this ball hit the ground. But it's not within two minutes. Not yet. So they would have to challenge in order to make sure this thing didn't. Let's take a look at this ball. That ball bounces on the ground. Take another look at it. We'll get a really good look there, hopefully. The previous play is under review. Well, that one was a tougher, tougher angle to tell. Pitta. Question is, did he prop that up with his fingertips? Did he get his hands under it? Or did the ground throw it up in the air for Andrew George to race another 20 or so yards with it? And if I'm not mistaken, this is the fourth time that a play will be reviewed tonight. Well, wouldn't you rather get it right? As we get a look here. That ball sure looks mm. like it hits the ground. That's... The most definitive look I think we're going to be able to provide. Well, you just can't tell. You cannot tell if the point of the ball hits the ground. And so after that, it's all gravy for Andrew George. Nice job to stay in bounds. Unless they have some better view that we don't get, they probably will. Let that one stand. Four of TCU's seven losses in the last three years have come on Thursdays. That Thursday very, night has not been kind. That very first view where you see the ball comes, it looks like the, the spin of the ball stops. And when the spin of the ball stops, that, that leads you to believe it hit the ground. And as we share point of view after point of view with you, need to thank a bunch of people, men and women in our technical crew, Mark for all of his help, with the operations from week to week, from city to city. As we watch one more piece of evidence. Ugh. Boy, it sure looks like it bounces off the ground there. When you see it in that first angle. Things change when you start to slow it down. Yeah, you're right, absolutely right. You, you, you start convincing yourself. Well, apparently, they're moving this ball back. And they didn't tell Referee us. Dan Romeo is about to make the call, the man in the white hat. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. The result of the play is an incompleted forward pass. It will be fourth down at the 33-yard line. The emotional Clock swings operator. in this Please game as a result of video review have been dramatic. Well, you know, that's a tough one to call. It sure looks like it bounced Clock the first operator, time I saw it. Please put 248. Now TCU will have that chance with the ball in their hands. BYU will have to punt it. All the production help we've gotten this year from Brett, graphics coordination from Louise, Andy, Steve, all the guys in tape for their help. Of course, the front row in the truck, Brad and Gary and Chris. And thanks to all of you for all of your help and all of your friendship. This has been by far the best game. We need to have a few more to just get it better. That Wisconsin UNLV game in 
Well, I Vegas meant from a, from was a good a friend's one. standpoint. Oh, yes. Fourth down and five. Santiago hits one that's end over end. Bonner says thanks to 30. Wheels away from one and then gets wrapped up and spun down. It is 27-22 in Mountain West play tonight. This Saturday, K-State, one win away from being bowl eligible. Freeman to Nelson's been a winning connection for the Wildcats. They need to claw their way to victory against the Nebraska team that you would imagine would be desperate. Versus college football, it's on Saturday, 12.30 Eastern time. Going back to what you were saying, all the guys in the truck, guys and ladies in the truck, fantastic job they've done for us this year. Made me look good, if that's possible. Week after week, month after month. Andy Dalton now, the pressure is on you. The redshirt freshman who was put on the bench early in the third quarter connects with Aaron Brown, but Brown gets hogtied over the middle. Every college kid thinks they're faster than the other guys out there. That's why they go backwards to go forward and end up costing themselves yardage. Second down, make it eight. Fans are standing and roaring inside of Lavelle Edwards Stadium for you on versus. Big pressure, big sack. David Nixon. Timeout, TCU. First charge time out of the half. At least two sacks in eight of nine games this year for the Cougars. Gonna come off the left side out here. 30 second charge time out. Straight under. Now what you're talking about, you're right there. Your your left guard to back up, Preston Phillips, needs to understand where he's got to go. Needs to understand where the protection is set to. He was just too late coming back for David Nixon coming under. And what you're gonna see right here, you're gonna see Outside and inside, and the guard never stops to take him. Take a look right here. It's a simple, simple scheme, and you've got to be smart, particularly in situations you know pressure is going to be paramount. Second down and eight, middle of the field, two minutes to go. You know they're bringing something. This BYU defense, which lost its coach on the field, Quinn Gooch, to an injury earlier tonight. Gooch. Went to the dressing room with an apparent knee injury. Nothing more specific than that, but it appeared serious. Blue and white supporters trying to root their heroes home to victory on Thursday night on versus. Dalton on third and 17 to Massey. And Massey trots out of bounds. Well, they got themselves in a fourth down and somewhat manageable. You never want to be fourth down to begin with. You never want to be at nine yards, but it sure beats the alternative. So. Credit them with understanding you got two downs to get the 19, not one. So what are you going to cook up here? Gary Patterson, the inspirational leader for the Horned Frogs. Dalton sends three wideouts to the far side of the formation. 0 for 2 on fourth down tonight. Dalton falls. Keel celebrates. And TCU's comeback effort looks like it will fall short. That was TCU's third drive stopped on downs in the second half. This is, we talk about the footing. He sees pressure, tries to turn, and slips, and down he goes. Oh. Talked about the footing all night long. What a helpless feeling that has to be. Trying to plant and then feeling nothing there. Three times though TCU had the ball. Twice, two of those times in great field position. Got down inside the 30 and turned the ball over on downs. Has to be a horrible feeling for Coach Patterson. Less than two to go in regulation, 27-22. TCU still has two timeouts remaining as we reset things for you from here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. BYU on the lead by five. They'll keep it on the ground. Unga inside the 20. Harvey Yunga, who has set BYU freshman rushing records this season. He and Max Hall have been among the heroes tonight. Tight end Dennis Pitta has been a factor. Austin Collie has had another big game at the wideout spot. And Tommy Blake 
who missed four games on a medical leave of absence, an undisclosed illness, got back into active duty last week, has been around the quarterback tonight. He's been he's been emotional for him, and he's been around the quarterback, but, I'm, but unfortunately, if you're a TCU fan, it's tough to get there against the spread offense and against a quarterback like Max Hall, who does a good job getting the ball out of his hands fast. The 72 11. seconds left. And the powerful Harvey Unga from right here in Provo. Delayed his enrollment after his high school graduation. Had an early season ending hip injury at Boston College, which really prompted his red shirt last year. He's been the feature back. And right now, Hall and Semenov. And Tonga are going to try to run out some time. Tonga bursts free inside the five. The Keystone Light always smooth moment of the game belongs to BYU's Matt Allen. Matt Allen, ball from Max Hall here. Why is this a smooth moment? An incredible grab, great footwork. Watch him get those feet down. That's smooth right there, Joe. The Keystone Light, always smooth moment, Glenn. Belongs to Matt Allen, who in high school was a state champion high jumper. He stretched himself to the fullest right there. As Allen, the senior, thrusts his arms in the air with the final 11 seconds soon to evaporate. Timeout, TCU. TCU takes the timeout. Charge timeout of the half. The Horn Frogs. Up next for them, they host UNLV on the 17th. They'll finish the regular campaign at San Diego State a week later. And they'll hope to be bowl eligible. Well, after this tight loss, they got to win a couple to get themselves bowl eligible. Thinking out loud, should they get to a sixth win? There was the possibility of perhaps seeing TCU in the Texas Bowl based in Houston. That's a Conference USA Big 12 matchup, but should one of those conferences not have enough to get there, TCU could be very, very attractive, obviously. Which, at this point, when you look at Conference USA, they don't have a, a lot of bowl-eligible teams, so it would be very possible that TCU could make that bowl with a couple more wins. Robert and I, the offensive coordinator right there for BYU, did a, another very good job as a real handle on this offense. And, Seems to be a guy that teaches it extremely well based on success in the past. Just with new guys coming in every year, particularly this year, new guys just seem to pick the system up, able to do a, a good job for Coach and I right off the bat. Sure looks like BYU and Max Hall are going to be ticketed to the Las Vegas Bowl against a Pac-10 rival. And as they line up in that victory formation, Hall waits. Waits, then takes a knee. And the teams file off the sidelines. A hard-fought affair in Provo. Coach Patterson, Coach Mendenhall congratulate one another. BYU has won 11 straight at home for the first time since 1991. They outlast the Horned Frogs by the final count of 27-22. We will have some closing thoughts for you in just a few moments. Get you back for more college football right here on Versus. It's a happy group of Cougars and a happy group of BYU faithful as the Cougars down the Horn Frogs 27-22. Tim Nebert standing by with a victorious quarterback. 249 yards passing, Max. A great night. Again, 249 yards for you. You had over 200 yards in the first half. Uh, an outstanding performance. You guys were able to hold on at the end. Yeah, you know, I think the key to us winning the game was making big plays, which I think we did, especially in the first half. Um, so that, I think that was the difference in the game is us making big plays and taking advantage of their mistakes. They were trying to do some work shutting down the running backs and the, and the tight ends, but you still managed to hit the tight ends. Uh, yeah, you know, those guys are good, and they're going to get open in their big bodies and guys you can throw the ball up to a little bit. So I was proud of how my guys played. My receivers made some great catches tonight and some great plays. So my hats go off to my team around me. Well, you haven't lost a home game here in two years. You're undefeated in the conference now. You're heading over to Wyoming next week. 
How about this win? Yeah, you know, we take pride in winning at home, and uh, we always want to play well in front of our fans and our stadium. So uh, TCU is a good football team, and they played us tough, and uh, it feels good to come out with a win. Uh, now we got a tough road game versus Wyoming, so we got to focus on that now. All right, Max, uh, congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. All right, Joe? Max, we appreciate it. Tim, thank you for all your hustle in the last uh, couple of months. Glenn, this has been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. I've enjoyed it, and thanks to everyone that's helped us. BYU gets the win over TCU tonight, 27. 22. For Tim and Glenn, for all the crew, Joe Beninati, thank you for your time. Remember Saturday, K-State travels to Nebraska, 12.30 Eastern on Versus. This Thursday night, the heroes welcome for Harvey Unger and the Cougars. BYU, let the band play. They down the Horn Frogs. <laughs>